small quantity of the action figure known as Turbo Man. I am not going to ask you people to be quiet again. Do you hear me? If you're not one of the lucky few, we have plenty of Turbo Man's faithful pet tiger booster in stock. We don't want it! We don't want it! I'm trying to use the phone! Enough from me. We're gonna have the games do our talking. Hey, what's up everybody? It's Jez7780 here, What Grinds My Gears, and welcome to episode 6 of the Gaming Grind House. We are here, oh my god, from me. We're gonna have the games do our talk. Jim Ryan Gordon Ramsey, man, breaking into my intro. That's right, we're gonna have the games do the talking, but man, Grinds My Gears is gonna do the talking tonight because Frog is down with family, and we might have some special guests jump on. The grindhouse door is slightly ajar tonight. It's slightly ajar, and we might have some special guests come on when that round table comes on, and the flames, and I put out the grind signal, and everybody comes on running in here because we got some stuff to talk about. Man, it was a dry Monday, but my good friend over at Xbox, and now, now he's moved over. He crossed the stream. We're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about the infamous Drew Murray moving on up. And he's moving on out. And we're going to be talking about that. But I also have the Grinds board. And we're going to have the monologue of Grinds. My gears. What's up, Social? What's up, Garuda? What's up, Salty? What's up, Dominic? What's up, Pitch Black and Mog? I know Pitch Black said it's too late. It's too late. Guys, we are four subscribers away from the 700th Grinder. It's incredible. I can't believe... Is gone this 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 lodge. I I am so happy, and guys, you awesome. Like it, this is I I this is such a great time, and uh, I just want to thank everybody, and I just keep trying to get better and better, and dude, you know, I'm gonna do my best and entertain and and and, and educate, and grind my gears because that's what it's all about. And uh, the gaming grindhouse door is a jaw. And, uh, yep, you'll be getting Grinds My Gears from here. And we'll be also, I will be putting out there, we got some new subscribers, and they asked me to do some special videos, and I will be doing a video on an, on uh, basically how to do the Share Factory and a tutorial on how to do that. And then I'll also be doing some a new segment and a new thing that I think I want to do called Gearhead. And basically it's going to be some of the tech. Some gaming tech that I reviewed. Some other things I have. I've been talking about that Pandora's box. I also got some headphones. You know, some $30 fat kid deals. Holy crap, that guy is making me spend some money, man. And then I also got some other things in the works. Some laptops. I, you know, I want to get some gear on here as well. You know, on the channel. But stay tuned. But we're going to... You know what? I'm going to tell you quick what I'm playing. And then we're going to go right to the grinds, boy. This is going to be the wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, game show. And we are going to hopefully hit 700 subscribers live. 
So if you're new here, hit that subscribe button. Maybe my widgets work. Maybe they don't. If not, I will play a sound off the grinds board for every new subscriber that we get. And you might even get a Phil Ness quality one if you're one of the lucky ones. So please, let's try to hit 700 live right here, right now, tonight, end of February 2021. Let's go. So far, grinders, I've been playing. Some retro games on that Pandora's box, man. I'm going to do a review on that, so I'm not going to belabor too much time on it. But, man, the 18S Pro Pandora's box at $200 off of Amazon. It is a retro gamer's dream. Thing has everything from PlayStation 1 to Nintendos to Super NES's to all the stuff. And you can download games from the store. Oh, man, it is incredible. I love these Pandora's boxes. My third one. And they just keep getting better and better. So, definitely. Another game that I've been playing, so I'll get into that review later, but I definitely recommend it. It's called a Pandora's Arcade Box. Next thing I'm doing, as somebody tech heck said, I've been doing Guilty Gears. What grinds my Guilty Gears? Dude, I like that game, man. I've been playing online, and I, let me see. Is he here? Is he in the chat? Pug, where are you? Pug, where are you? Man, I, Pug came into my stream, and he was like, yo, man, I challenge you to grind my Guilty Gears. And I was like, oh, shit, he wants, he wants to do this live, man. He wants to do this live. Guys, hit that like button as you come in. So I, I fought Pug. I found him. So what's cool about uh, the Metal Gear, uh, not Metal Gear, Jesus, Guilty Gear Strive is that they have a cool multiplayer lobby that basically it's like a side-scroller type of 8-bit thing. And you have an avatar, and you walk around, and you're in different parts of the tower. So, you know, me being a, a good gamer, I would say. Yeah, that's right. Ger Gerudo, Gerudo was my sensei. Ger shout out to Gerudo. Gerudo was my sensei. He was telling me to sweep the leg. Sweep the leg, Grinds. Sweep the leg. I know, Pug. Wherever you are, Pug, I, I, we got we to gotta call for Pug. Because I knocked them so many times. I was trying to demo how they have this new wall-breaking mechanic where you can knock the person off the level and they go to another part of the level, which I love. I remember those times from Dead or Alive 5 when there's multi-tiered levels. Dude, that's awesome. That's getting me excited about this game and, and really interested in it because I like fighting games with that kind of dynamic. So, game looks incredible. It is like this 2D, 3D, anime-type style. And I basically did, like... I was, Garuda said to be May. So I was May. She has the power of Sea of Thieves. She sends the Kraken. That's Lacken. She sends Shamu. And I have to go Shamu. And basically, I threw the whole bunch of Sea of Thieves content at the bad guys. And, uh, you know, it made me win a lot of times because I learned May's move of throwing all the dolphins and Shamu and the Kraken uh, without the body, but just the tentacles. And, uh, yeah, I, I whooped their ass. And I, and I moved up. And I played my Jefferson song, moving on up to the top. And I basically moved up. But anyway, Pug challenged me. He was on level four of the Tower of Ranking. I was on level six. So I said, Pug, I can't go down there to the Game Pass Fada. I got to stay at level six. So Pug, all of a sudden, I don't know what he did. I don't know if he took the butler in the back room. But man, Pug shot up to level six to challenge me. I was hanging out at the bar. They got a bar there. I was talking to Tom Cruise. And I was hanging out at the bar. He was doing his flips with cocktail. And I was basically waiting for Pug. Pug challenged me. He had his 3D glasses on. And I fought Pug. And we were doing it live. We are fighting. And, 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 you know, and I felt bad. Like, I'm not no great Guilty Gear player. But, man, Pug challenged me. He challenged me. He, he threw down the gauntlet. So I fought Pug. And I got to demo knocking him to five different levels. But then he left because I got promoted. The butler came up to me at the end of the game and he goes, sir, you got the keys to level seven. Would you like to go? And I was like, sure. So I moved up to level seven. Pug went somewhere else and we didn't, we didn't find them the rest of the night. So Pug, if you're out there, I'll fight you in the park because the park is not ranked. So we could fight in the park and you could show me some moves. But, man, I've been whooping that ass with May. 
And I threw that see if these content at people. People weren't ready for that see if these content. That's three years of goddamn see if these content that I threw at everybody. Incredible. And Garuda kept telling me to sweep the leg. Yo, check out that stream. That was a fun time, man. But yo, that that beta, it's been open. I think it's been extended to the 26th. Recommend it definitely for that. Actually, what the hell? Grinds. Man, I, I slap myself sometimes. Jeez, you know, I like to have visuals with my stuff. And I'm talking jibber jabbering. God damn, and I'm jibber jabbering. And I didn't friggin' share my stuff. Like I could have I could have done this, guys. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I I think this was Pugs Fight. One of these was Pugs Fight. I'm here describing this crap. Dude, it's right here. Here it is. Here's my stream. Here it is. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, that leg at front. That sucked. But then that 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 uh opened it up. But yeah, there she is. See if these baby. So then here, this was the, the lobby. This is the park that I was describing about. And it's open beta, so I recommend to go try it. So this is the park. Here I am, my shades and my shorts and my hoodie. I was just looking for people. Um, at first, I was pulling out the trident, which was my 12 teraflops. See, I'm walking out there. That was too intimidating for a lot of people. So I pulled. Uh, I, I went with a little stick to make it look like that I, I was new. But uh, because everybody would see, I just stood there with my 12 teraflops right there. I said the most powerful uh, console ever, holding it up there. Pulled it out of my pants, 12 teraflops of, of Axe. Uh, I was Phil the Axe Man Spencer right there. I was cutting grass. You know, we got to cut the grass out of the content. And, uh, yeah, nobody came to challenge me. So I knew when I pulled out my magic wand stick, the smallest stick, more people came over to me. Uh, and it, it worked out pretty well. Yeah, this dude was scooping me out. I don't know what the hell was going on with that dude. But it was a very fun stream. I had a great time, man. It was some good times. And then, uh, and then yeah, so this is the park that's not ranking. And then here's some of the, here's some of the fight. Is this Pug? Let me see if this is Pug. Is this Pug? Actually, man, was that Pug? I don't know. So anyway, we'll see. If the guy flies a little, this might have been Pug. Dax the man twenty. I think that's his Pug. But um, yeah. So Pug, wherever you are, you man, long time grinder, man. Wherever you are, no, I don't think this is Pug. Or whatever. I whooped this ass. Whoever this person is. But yeah, man, the game looks great. Uh, you know, and what's cool too. Speaking about Guilty Gear. I'm not, I really don't know a lot about Guilty Gear. Like, there's so many different types of fighting games and stuff like that. I don't know too much about Guilty Gear. But, um, you know, I'm all the Street Fighter, I'm all combat, even some of SNK, you know, Marvel vs. Capcom, like uh, Guilty Gear, some Tekken. You know, I played a lot of Tekken too. But, um, but yeah, but, you know, I really like the animations and I like, you know, the way they do this. This is pretty damn awesome. And, oh, there we go. Yeah, this is Pug. So I knocked him off the level to another level and I did it again. I think this was Pug. Sorry, Pug. I didn't mean to, to do this. Hopefully, hopefully you're okay, Pug. But yeah, so like, so like you can knock them off the level onto another level in the middle of a fight and and at the end of a fight. It's pretty awesome. And uh, and then I threw to see if these content at them. But yeah, yo, really awesome game. Uh, the animations, the the um, the, and it's pretty open. Like the, here comes the see if these content. Here it is, Shamu. Oh, yep, there goes Pug again. Sorry. But yeah, so um, yeah, I got knocked off the level twice. But yeah, that is a really good shamu. <laughs> the shamu at him. But um, and then see this, and see this is just evidence of what happened. Now watch the butler comes up to me now. The butler he comes up to me now and he he gives me the keys to the penthouse. So I'm I'm here talking. I'm like, oh my god, but see that's it. Here comes the butler. Watch what he does. See. I'm not lying. It, hear me. Get out of the fodder levels. Dude, they, they're moving me up. <laughs> moving on up to the top. <laughs> Woo! I finally have a piece of the pie. Things don't burn in the kitchen. Oh, yeah. Things don't burn on the grill. Hip hop home. I'm moving on up. There we go. Hug <laughs> on level seven. I moved on up, man. <laughs> <laughs> Silver Spoons. That's right, Nick Silver Spoon. I'm moving on up. So I moved up. And uh, yeah, and I never found them again. So if anybody finds Pug, Pug, shout out to you, man. Thank you again. Please come through. I want to play again. Uh, I won't use May. Garuda, I promise. Sensei will be in the corner. I'll just give him the look. Garuda's not going to tell me to sweep the leg. I'm not going to I'm not gonna do any legal moves. Uh, but I will strike first. So I'm the best around. But anyway, so yeah, Guilty Gear, enough. Yo, Fun. The lobbies worked. 
see here, you gotta see like level six, level seven. The only problem is that level seven was kind of tough for me because they knew my Sea of Thieves move while I was throwing all the friggin' ocean at them and all the content. They, um, you know, they they got better and they demoted me a couple of times. But yeah, it is it is pretty fun. Yeah, and here's Tom Cruise at the bar. See, I was hanging out up at the bar, telling him, tell him to meet me, studying my moves and stuff. You could study at the bar. But yeah, very good. Guilty Gear, yeah, I think comes out April. Comes out right, yeah, April. I near my birthday too. Uh, comes out in April and definitely recommend downloading it, checking it out. It's a really good fighting game. Looks great on the PlayStation 5, and I recommend to check that out. But yeah, I played a lot of that, and um, yes, they 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 took me down a couple of levels, guys. Buck Rogers, they did. Buck Rogers, he saw he saw what went down. Oh my god, I got another sub. Six ninety seven. Who's getting it? Who's getting it? No, that's the wrong one. I lied. <laughs> yes, I'm trying to find a gentleman doll. Me too, me too. Do you have any more in the back? And may the Schwartz be. Thank you, subscribers. Your... Thank you. So, anyway, yes. So, uh, yeah, so I did that, and then let's see what else I played. I was walking around. Uh... Who's that? <laughs> so I was playing around, and then um, yeah, I started the Phoenix, uh, Phoenix Rising. I started that. Yo, that is pretty damn cool, man. Yeah, he's still on page seven of Steam sales. That's what I, that's what I was doing, man. See, I was lurking. I was lurking up there, man. I was looking for the page seven of Steam sales, man. I was just I was just checking it out, lurking around there. Um, you know, looking for somebody who was a low level, and then the sixty eight show up and stuff like that. But um. Yeah, so <laughs> you like that chant? So, um, yeah, hit the like button, everybody, as you're coming in here. We got the, uh, we got uh, like over 50 grinders here. This is awesome. So, we got, so, um, yeah, so Phoenix Rising, I was playing and, uh, did some of that. Uh, definitely a really interesting game. The way it's told, like, it's told from a story perspective. And I thought it was funny with the, um, you know, with Zeus and, and Prometheus, like, you know, uh, working, like, discussing things. So, it's pretty interesting. I'm interested to play it. Uh, definitely, uh, elements of, of Zelda Breath of the Wild with the stamina bar and things like that. Uh, holy crap. Now it's ain't two subs away. No, Fro Frog's not on. Hey, shout out to Kid Smooth. What's up, man? Frog, Frog's not on tonight. Uh, he has some fans. It's just a monologue. But, um, so we got, uh, yeah, so I did the Phoenix Rising and that was pretty damn cool. And, uh, I would say I'm not that long into it. Maybe like an hour or stuff like that. So I've been playing that, and then also I did, uh, yeah, I've been jumping into that Destruction All-Stars, man. Every time I just want to just jump in and just smash some cars up. But again, the problem, again, with that game is really on the unlocking and the longevity of it. Like, I think they still need to be adding game modes. I follow the developer on Twitter and also, you know, seeing that their updates and stuff. They've been adding updates, but it's more of just like kind of like XP updates to kind of get them more of that XP. But, um, yeah, we'll see. I think they need some new game modes and soon i think by the end of this month like yeah this week and next week i think they need a new game mode uh something yeah they gotta they gotta freshen that thing up uh because yeah just crashing around a little bit but i tell you it's still polished man it's still a polished game and it you crash and stuff like that but yeah the 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 whole progression thing really needs uh really needs to be worked on for that destruction all stars so hopefully they add some more some more game modes to it but uh, you can find the game pretty quick but still it's just eh 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 it's a it's a grind man. It's a man grind, but um, but it looks good too. It looks all right, but it's definitely uh, something to try out. It's free, so I recommend it if you you, you could try. You just want to crash some stuff, but uh, again, they still need to fix on that content for uh, progression and stuff like that to get people hooked for that. Um, and then my son just signed up for the Rocket League game pass, so I've been trying to level. We've been leveling up together in Rocket League. They had some cool game modes in that as well, but um. But that's about it for all I'm playing. So now, since we don't have anybody else in the grindhouse tonight, doors ajar. Frog and I know we're family tonight, so we're holding it down. We're going to uh, go right. <laughs> Salty said, I'm not going to lie. You haven't played Destruction All Stars. Yeah, it had, nothing has changed, Salty. Like, that's it. Nothing has changed. Like, you basically, I went to see if they added some stuff. They added some, like, they added some XP challenges. Stuff like that uh, to use certain characters and things, but that's about it. There's no, yeah, there's no good customization, no toppers, no, no real cool emotes, and even the, the like. I don't even want to spend my money in that thing. Like, the, I mean, the money that I'm earning, um, I don't even want to spend it because it's just like blue, yellow, green, purple. I'm like, well, this is stupid. 
You know, what kind of customizations are that? Ah! I pulled my headset out. God damn. Hold on. There we go. Hey, what's up, Jcat? Hey, Sam CTM. What's up? So, uh, with that, we're going to go to the grinds board. We're going to the grinds board. Let's go. Let's go to the grinds board. Where are we? Here we go. All right, let me find it. Did I, did I drag it over? Thought I did. Hold on, I have to drag over the the grinds board here. I thought I did already. But there we go. So these are the grinds board topics for tonight. Hopefully you can see them. There we go. Let's see if they're popping up. I think you should see them now. Yeah, I had to go grab them because they couldn't find them in the the thing. Oh, there it was. God damn, I'm a friggin' blind bastard. There they are. Moving around. We're doing doing this live. There we go. So the topics. Also I have a couple of topics I'm gonna throw in here on the grinds board. But here's the topic. Here's the rundown. Okay. So Diablo 2 remastered. All right, we're going to say Diablo 2 Remastered. This is going to be a fast topic because guess what, guys? I never played Diablo 2. I played Diablo 3 on console because I never played any games on PC. Uh, so Diablo is pretty damn old. I think it's like 20 years. This is the thing. Blizzard, what's going on? These guys, man. This is an out-of-season April Fool's joke. Not much detail on BlizzCon Overwatch 2. Diablo 2 Resurrected. First of all, my thing is, what the hell took so long? What took so long? That's that's my thing. I know, JK. I do leave the juicy stuff to the end. Hoping the crash table comes through with the end. But yeah, like, really? What took so long for Diablo? Like, what's what's going on here? I'm glad it's going to console. Yeah, we're going to do a... We'll do a little thing here just to give you guys a visual. Like, I'm glad it's coming to console. That's nice. What the hell? I got two things. Like, it's nice that it's coming to the console. But, like, 20 years. 20 years. Guys. For a remaster? Dude. And Diablo 4 seems to be uh, way off. Again. Uh, but Yabara. Let's go. Stop tweeting. Stop streaming. Get on here. Now, granted, this is what Diablo 2 looked like. And now look at the remaster. Because I even looked back to see when Diablo 3 came out. Very nice. Very... Oh, my goodness. 20 years in the making. Here we go. Tw look at this. Yeah. I know this classic for some people. I'm not going to be bitter about it. Nice to get more new games. Very nice. Um, Diablo 3, though, came out, like, what? F the 10 years ago? 8 years ago? And now Diablo 2 Remastered comes out. And Diablo 4, uh, no date yet. And not much on Overwatch 2. Um, oh man, T Rox wants me to see some Demon Souls. Oh shit, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll do some Demon Souls, but anyway, and cross progression. I'm kind of very nice, all the nice stuff. Interested in seeing Diablo 2. Uh, I did like Diablo 3, that was my first way, uh, first thing. And I know people are excited for this game, but I just don't, you know, these Activision, man, Blizzard, you know, Blizzard, same thing with, 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 uh, you know, with, um, who's the other ones? It's Blizzard, and yeah, they just like just sit on these IPs, man. Just like, man, I remember when freaking Diablo three was announced, people were going crazy. But at least they're coming out with a game now. Return to Hell, thanks. And no info on Diablo four. Like, here's the the trailer for Diablo four. 
Uh, let's see. This was the announced trailer to Diablo 4 here. So not much from the grinds about this. I just say 20 years to do number 2 remastered. That's nice, but you know, I don't know what took so long. We already did Diablo 3. We're waiting for Diablo 4. I guess this is a pacifier with Diablo 2. Maybe I'll check it out, but we'll see. Uh, but yeah, this is Diablo 4. Let me see. Is this just a... Oh my goodness, they're chopping off years. Oh man. This is what I always think is fun about PC games, though, these kind of games. It's like, oh my god, look at these graphics. Look at this game. And meanwhile, it's like a top it's a top down. <laughs> it's like, oh my god, look at this game. My god, I can't wait to play this. Oh man, chopping off years. This is crazy. Look at this. This is the game looks like, oh my god. And this is the game. Nah, but this looks good though. Diablo 4 definitely looks good. But yeah, come on. Oh, look at that. You just sliced him in there. See? Dismemberment, all that other stuff. See, look at that. Yeah, see, I like that. I like these kind of games like Diablo 3 when it had like the rag doll and dismemberment and stuff. Like, look at this. This looks freaking cool. I, I'm ready for Diablo 4, man. Oh, my, do you don't have a phone? <laughs> but anyway, this is Diablo 4. No, it doesn't sound like it's coming anytime soon. Maybe next year. They'll have another convention. The show itself. And the BlizzCon next year, maybe you'll you'll get a release date. And then everybody can start crying and uh, dropping their pants. So, uh, yep. Thank you, Diablo 4. Diablo Topic, Grinds Board, next. Excited for everybody. Excited for Diablo, Blizzard. Good job. We're doing good. Doing good here. Eating well. Eating well. Oh, Garuda's leaving. Good night, Garuda. Hit that like button on the way out. And please uh, keep the grinds door ajar as you leave. The next thing, Madden EA Play, March 2nd. Madden 21 is here. Ladies and gentlemen, just like they always do, Madden 21 is here. Um, so this has been my routine with Madden with EA Play. You get rid of it right before Super Bowl. Because they put it right into the game EA Play when uh, Super Bowl's over. Right at the end of the season, they put in the games in there. Hockey, I want to know what they're going to do with hockey. Hockey, they usually hold off until playoff time. And then they put it in EA Play. FIFA, usually they put it in a month after hockey. Or, or a month before hockey, they do FIFA. So that's the kind of way they roll. Uh, with hockey having the season, so I'm thinking hockey's going to come in there. But man, I tell you, EA hurting. EA's hurting. That EA play is garbage. Because all it's been, they held on to Star Wars for over a year. before They didn't put out a 10-hour demo for Star Wars either, those sneaky bastards. They didn't do that either. And now it's just the sports games. And UFC. Like, that's it, man. EA, they got to make some more games. God damn it. And I know they got that game from that Yosef guy coming. So, like, you know, we'll see what that looks like with that one. Next topic. FPS boost. We got boost. We got the booster. <laughs> yes, hockey still. We got FPS boost. And in the latest interview, they stated about this FPS boost. So let me explain what this is. This is FPS, uh, FPS frames per second boost on Xbox Series S and Series X. Um, it's a feature that you can turn on and off. And what they've done is they, they've took uh, five games, six games. They have uh, Sniper Elite 4. They took uh, Sniper Elite 4, Lucky's Tales, Lucky's Tales. Um, and, uh, they took, uh, Watch Dogs 2, UFC 4, and, uh, I said Sniper Elite 4 as well, and Far Cry 4. Those are the games that they've selected, uh, to, to launch with this feature, frame, frames per second booster. And, uh, what it is is that they went back to these games, and they jacked up the resolute, the, um, not the resolution, the frame rate from 30 to 60, 
in those other games. And then in Super Lucky's Tales, they made it extra super. And they made it 120 frames per second in Super Lucky's Tales. Now, um, that was pretty cool. It's a cool feature. Um, I stated before on a lot of other shows. And, and again, it's just another, my opinion, it's just another, you know, the way they roll this out is my problem. They, they have, it's, uh, and I understand these are special features, and now they're going to keep rolling this out in different. Here's new announcements. Major Nelson could tweet out next week. Here's four more games that get FPS boost. Uh, here's another game that gets boost, and they could stay relevant in the news every week. And, you know, add that to the announcements for Game Pass. Games coming to uh, Android, console, and PC. Those are separate announcements. Add that to uh, enhancements, which you haven't heard that many of enhancements. Uh, you know, we get those extra penile enhancements at night for the uh, for the Series X because those extra enhancements they give them. And uh, we got those announcements. Now they got the frames per second ones. Games that support smart delivery. We got games that support velocity architecture. We got all these. And, and it's not the same game. It's all sometimes all different games. This game does. This game's Series is X enhanced. But this one's not. This one's a play anywhere. This one's not. This one's just launching on Android. This one's just launching on PC. This one's just launching on Game Pass. This one's launching on Android X Cloud with touch controls because that's another list. They got a list of those games, games that are having, um, you know, what are they called? X Cloud. Well, they don't call it X Cloud. They call it Xbox Game Pass for Android. Um, X Cloud touch controlled games list. Uh, here we go. It has, it's another is an another list. Um, here we go. So here, here, see, this is why what, what I'm talking about here, guys. Like this is, this is the 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 stuff that like you know. And again, it's not bad, but it's just the way they're packaging this stuff, dude. Here we go. Like, <laughs> sorry to sign me up. Here we go. Like this was announced when October twenty second, twenty twenty. Xbox Touch Control on mobile coming to more games, giving you more ways to play. Um, here's the list of games that are going to be featuring with touch controls on Android. Dead Cell, Guacamole. So now these you could use with touch on your Android 5-inch phone. It's another list. Did anybody keep in tabs on it? This is another list. Certain games that just support this. Super Lucky's Tales. It's being the uh, the bitch of all the new features. Here we go. Super Lucky Tales in this one. So we got the same game in there. Streets of Rage. Tell me why. Undermine. So this is another list. So that's that touch control list. Then we got, uh, you know, the FPS boost list. Like, this is the thing. It's just like, how how are you, you know, how effective are you to kind of market these features when they're just coming fragmented pieces, dude? What's up, D? The Almighty, what's up? You know, and, and this is the thing. Like, I just, I don't understand how, like, uh, why does everything seem like a beta test, dude? Like, that's the thing. Like, why is everything, f and then here we go. Like, and, and this is the start of it. Look, look, I, I had true achievements. It's like, what games would you like to see utilize FPS boost? What games would you like to see backwards compatible? Which games would you like to see? Here's the list. Like, look. But they did Watch Dogs 2, Far Cry 4, when there's Far Cry 5 out there, Watch Dogs 2, uh, the Super Lucky's Tale said who? Said nobody. Um, you know, these are proof of concepts. Nice. That's a nice UFC 4. Like, and then here comes the wish lists. Like, it's another wait. Another wait for my game to maybe show up on this list. And it's another thing. It's just another thing. And and I just don't understand why is everything seem to be um, this freaking type of just beta. You know, if you're going to roll this out, you got big plans for frames per second boost and, and all this other stuff. You have these big plans. Like, why don't you get, like, a nice list of games going and announce the feature? You know what I mean? Get the game is get their, get their appetites a little wet. I understand that they don't want to play old, like, all the games all the time and they want the new stuff coming from first party, but... Come on, man. Let's go. Be connected with your fans. Like, be connected. You got people who bought these consoles and they're looking for them. Get some games, man. Get get a nice 20, 30 game. Woo. Get some big hitters. Get your first. Start with your first party, goddammit, right? Do your first party at least. 
Get those games like Rise, like Sunset Overdrive. Let's go De Dead Rising 3. Come on, man. You know? Let's go. If this is if this is a feature that you're going to make a post about and get hyped up, let's get those games, man. Get like 25, 30 games and roll it out. You start with six. Okay. Another list. The other thing with the frames per second boost is that they added, um, and this was on I think Colt Eastwood's interview with uh, with uh, with with Xbox. He did this interview where um, they said that in some games now moving forward, this is not going to work on all games, but in some games they might have to lower the resolution down a little bit to get the frames per second boost. And um, yeah, so I don't know how much they're going to drop the resolution, but apparently these six games. Um, they, I went to watch the videos. They did not lower the resolution on these six games uh, at all. And actually, you know, it, it, which is pretty interesting is like Super Lucky's Tales, you know, running at 120 frames at 1080p. I know it's not a super demanding game, but that running on the Series S, that's not bad, you know. Like for, for a $300 box, for what it is, you know, if that's what your thing is, that's what your thing is, you know. But, um, but basically, you know, these games that... Uh, Moving forward, we don't know which games, but they might have to load some of the resolution on those uh, on those games for to make this frame rate increase. But these, they did not do that, so that's good to know. With these games, maybe that's why they selected these games. Maybe they're still trying to work on, you know, some of these games moving forward uh, because I'm sure they'll have to contact the devs if they're going to drop the resolution. But I think they said that's another reason why this frames per second boost um, is going to allow it to be selectable. And the fact that, you know, if you want to play basically like a resolution mode or you want a frames per second mode, you are able then to switch it on and off. So at least they give you the choice to do that. They're not forcing the frames per second on <laughs> Buck Rocks and Booster mode. Oh, uh, you know, but um, but yeah, but on those games, uh, yeah, and Kiss Mood, yeah, shout, yeah, I those games, they never dropped the resolution on, on those games, those six games. Those six games are still at 900p, I think, for Watch Dogs. And uh, 1080p for um, for Lucky's Tales uh, and 4K on the on the Series X too. So moving forward, they're gonna have to see um, what they're gonna do. But um, it's not upset. Just giving the, the thing is though, it's another list, another wait list, another another selecting list. And the problem is, is not the features. The problem is not the features. The problem is the way that it's that they're they're doing this stuff. They're, they're making things like they should just package it together and make it work. Like their marketing and stuff, it seems so beta. It seems so just like just seems so just fragmented on this stuff because they they have icons for these things. They have they have all these things. And it's not just frames versus frames boost. It's not backwards compatibility frames boost. It's all that other stuff. The enhancements, smart delivery, velocity architecture. You know, it's all those things. And it's just like tramp stamps, I call them, because that's all they are. Remember that we complained that they had them on all over the front of the box. Thank God they moved them. But, you know, it's just all these stamps, like, bah, 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 and they all pop up. And I say, it's like, you're playing frames for second mode, boosted, auto HDR, blah, 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 blah. And it's like, you know, one of those, like, late night infomercials. It's like, no, wait, there's more. It's like, dude, just let me play my game. Get all this tramp stamp shit out of my way. You know? And it's just, it, it, it's nice. I don't know if it's just over-marketing on their end. Just make, just your old games play better. I know it's it's part of that thing, but it's just, mm. It's just another list, like an, another list. And I know that's the way this thing works, but I just feel like if you're going to make another list, at least start with, like, I think when they did backwards compatibility, how much did they, did they start with, like, 50? How many game, backwards compatible games? Let me see. But backwards compatibility was different. That one, they had to get licenses and all that other stuff. This one, supposedly, they don't need the devs' input at all. They could just do it. So I would thought it had been more than six games. But, again, they started with six. It's, again... And I think this is the overall thing grinders with me. I'm impatient. I want excitement. And I feel like Microsoft and Xbox don't have the time that they think they have. Um, and again, that, this is me. That's why when I see these things, I'm just like, dude, the boat has left. You got to start getting people back on the boat. You don't have time to stop and, and, and drop a line and look at some fish. Dude, your competition is just going. 
You you don't have time to sit here and just just do little things here and there. Like I just feel like you got to grab that mind share, grab it by the balls, and get people back. Let's go. And I just this is my feeling about it. Like I feel every one of these things are just like, dude, let's go. You don't have the time. Time is a wasting. You can't just keep doing these little things and, and go like it's great. But it's not the stuff that you need to do right this like you gotta you gotta lay down the footwork. What the hell? Let's show some Halo, show some some avowed, show some fable, show some perfect dog. Like you got some things to show. You gotta build on this stuff. You can't just be that oh, one here's here's some boost. Here's a boost. You know? <laughs> Where is he? Here's a boost. The rumors are true. We a boost. A small hey, hey. Nice. A feather in the cap. So the next thing, speaking about tech. All right. So this is the thing. There's been a lot of stuff going on. I didn't think I didn't add this to the grinds bug. This is this is an ad hoc because this took extensive research, and um, I've been analyzing these these chip scans a lot, and um, you know I've almost spent like I think my whole day Saturday looking at the scans, going into forums, really looking at the tech and seeing where this RDNA 1.1 and RDNA 2 has been going on. And um, I, it's really been one of those things where I, it really consumed me because I was looking at the scans with, with a monocle, like really closely looking at them and, and reading the tech. And, uh, and I want to kind of present that right now to show you what I found because it is amazing that the PlayStation could not have this RDNA from what I'm looking at. And the, the research just went so deep. And I, and I made some PowerPoint slides and some spreadsheets that I just want to show you guys because um, it, it wasn't on the grinds board. But I was like, you know what? Since, since there's just nobody's here tonight, I could, just, I could kind of take us through this, this presentation that I made looking at the scans and RDNA to prove that the Xbox has better RDNA than the PlayStation 5 because the scans don't show it. And and I don't know what's coming from and I and I researched this, and it's it's, it's a it, I I I'm just I, I'm you know what, let me just do the presentation. So hold on, let me pull up my presentation here. So I, I've really researched this. So grind this, uh, you know, hit the like button, you know, and, and you know share this video out because this is going to be very educational. We're going to spend the next about thirty minutes going over our DNA and our DNA two and seeing you know that the PlayStation. Um, the PlayStation is in trouble, and uh, the Xbox maybe have better. I don't know, but it's it's the tools are here, and, and you know what, tails like tiles, this is it. So I'm gonna just do run my presentation here. Hold on. So, so here's Exhibit A about the RDNA two and an RDNA one. So um, here we go. Let me see. Do I have it sharing? Yeah, I do. Okay. So here's the presentation. There's 20 more slides there. Fuck out of here! Here it is. Xbox, PS5 have all DNA too. Next fucking topic. We're done. Research over. There it is. AMD's website. I'll give you the links in the goddamn fucking descriptions. Let's move on. Holy shit! The fuck out of here with this bullshit. All DNA in my ass. There it is. You want to see it? Go back in slow motion and read the fucking page. All DNA twos in both the PlayStation 5 and Xbox. Get the fuck out of here. Let's move on. Bullshit topics. Let the... Go to Ramsey. Get the fuck over here. Say something. Say something. Go to Ramsey. Enough from me. We're going to have the games do our talking. We're done. Next topic. Next topic. Take your DNA. Get the fill DNA out of your eyes. It's two across the board. We're done. There's my research. There's my fucking research. We're done. Hit that like button, sons of bitches. We'll get that, that subscribe button. Let's get that 700. We'll, there's my fucking research. I'm going to put a patent on that goddamn research. It was extensive. Took a long time. 
<laughs> Y'all got the crunch. <laughs> God damn it. Oh, DNA my ass. <laughs> the fuck out of here. <laughs> Next topic. The hell I um, waste my time on that bullshit. Halo 1 Day 1 Weapons. Go watch my other video. I'm done with that shit, too. <laughs> <The boy. laughs> Sorry. I got to go with that Silent Hill. Dude, that's si <laughs> that Silent Hill. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Deep breath. Sorry. Those silent <laughs> blow up people's eardrums. <laughs> well, good. I spared you my, my research. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um. <laughs> well, thank you, Grinders. But yeah, yeah, anyway. Sorry about the silent hill. I'm going to make sure I lower that right now. I'm going to make sure I <laughs> blow out of people's eardrums. <laughs> but yeah. As you could tell. The odd DNA stuff, dude, we're done. We're done. We can move on. We're going to go to the next topic. <laughs> the next topic. Yo, things are rolling around here. Oh, yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Microsoft flexing. They're flexing. <laughs> They're flexing. Dude. Possible Bethesda event. We got March 5th is when Phil goes over there and puts his John Hancock all over the friggin' Bethesdas and Zenimaxes. He ready. Oh, it was me, <laughs> it was me yelling in the mic. I'm sorry. <laughs> I forgot I got my better quality mic on here. I'm going to love it myself. Don't want to be screaming at y'all. <laughs> so, Microsoft Flex him. Now that they're saying, is they're saying that when they finish this deal, they're going to have a possible Bethesda event. Um, and, and the rumor is that supposedly last year, some, uh, some guy who has some, some, some inside knowledge, at the end of last year, said Starfield is slated for 2021. So we're thinking that if Microsoft and Bethesda and the Zenimax man do this, uh, yes, go slowly and see exactly a multiplied event. But yes, so they might have an event until show Starfield. Um, there's gonna be a lot of digital events this year, but um, this is the thing: the right thing, the, the the real thing that would work is that these games are exclusive. And these games are only going in Game Pass at launch. That is the real thing that you do when you buy a studio. That's the kind of stuff that you do. And that's what should happen. Now, if you want to get all the wishy-washy people out of the way saying exclusives are anti-consumer, because they're the same people now that are saying buy up everybody and lock it down on Game Pass. No, that's not anti-consumer. But... Exclusives are anti-consumer, but now we want to buy studios and make all that shit exclusive. Okay, same people. Exclusives matter. That's why I have the same opinion. If they're going to buy the studios, they should make it for Game Pass. If they want that growth, they should make it exclusive to Game Pass. Starfield, Elder Scrolls, everything, even friggin' that superstar over at Bethesda, his ass is exclusive. Make it all exclusive to Game Pass. Sign up for $15 a month. Get your free Pop-Tarts and play those Bethesda games. They need to. Especially if Sati is breathing down Phil's neck and saying, I need more subs in Game Pass. I need more subs in Game Pass. That's the way you do it. Time exclusive. You don't do what they've been doing where... Minecraft Dungeons is coming out for everything. You know, that game was that game shouldn't have been ex that game should have been exclusive. They put it on everything. Now the other one, Psychonauts 2, Out of Worlds, they didn't publish that one. 
uh, Wasteland 3, you know, all those games, multi-platform. That's not going to drive people to Game Pass. And I was thinking about it. If you have die-hard Bethesda players, right? So Starfield, say, say Starfield is like, oh my god, I gotta play this game. Right? And you have a PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, and you have uh, an X, you don't have an Xbox, and and basically what you want to do is get traffic into Game Pass, right? If you take the Starfield and you put Starfield, now just think about this, because I'm gonna I'm not gonna scream. Don't don't worry, I'm not gonna scream the mic. <laughs> I lowered it, so okay. Think about it. You take Starfield and make it exclu- and don't make it exclusive, and you put it on Game Pass. It's sixty dollars, seventy dollar game, um, and then it's on on PlayStation and on PC Steam. All right, and you could buy it there. The person on PlayStation is not going to say, "Screw the PlayStation, I'm going, I'm not going to buy," and and they're just hyped up for Starfield. I'm not talking about any other content. You're talking about Starfield. All right, but there's this game, this one game, but there's this game. They're not going to sit there and go, hey, I don't want to pay 60 or 70 dollars for Starfield. I want to go pay 15 dollars a month instead to play this game. I don't think that that's not going to draw people into the service that don't have like they're not going to say, I'm not going to play it here where I'm just interested in this game. I'll pay my $7 and I'll buy the game and I'll own it and I'll play it because it's going to be a long game. Especially, you know, these games are, are pretty long if it's going to be a traditional build. If it's going to be a games as a service, then then I don't want to hear it. I'm going to put on my goddamn Arnold Schwarzenegger thing. Take it back. Actually, here it is. Ah! <laughs> if they saw the bullshit and service thing, Fallout 76 style. If it's not, if it's traditional Bethesda game, like a Fallout 4, the person on the other platform is not going to say, I want to pay $15 a month to play this game and go get an Xbox and sign up for Game Pass. They're they're just going to buy the game and play the game, just like they would normally. However, if Microsoft takes that game and only puts it in Game Pass, now those diehard people that would have bought the game on those other platforms now would go to Game Pass and buy it and probably subscribe because that's the cheaper way to getting it. But if it's available to them on where they play, which is the quote that Phil says all the time, I'm going to play, then they're just going to get the game where they are. And I don't know if that's going to grow Game Pass. And I don't know how that's going to work. But I think they have a double-edged sword here. I think if they launch the game only in Game Pass, they know that people are not buying it. At least all the people on Xbox. Like, if if you launch this thing in Game Pass on Xbox, those people are probably going to just have their subscriptions and play. Because you got to remember, and this is the biggest problem that I think a lot of people don't realize. It is a problem for Microsoft, not for us. The biggest problem... Well, it could be for us. A lot of people signed up for Game Pass with a dollar promotion. And they signed up with a box of Pop-Tarts. All this. Those are trials, though. We joke about that stuff. But the real thing is, is that in 2019, you were able to buy up to three years of Xbox Live for $60 a year. So that's $180. And then upgrade for $1 to Xbox Live Ultimate which turned your three years of Xbox Live into three years of Xbox Live Ultimate. That was in 2019. You were only allowed to stack up until three years. So, that comes due next year, next summer, because this is when they rolled it out. You only could stack up to three years. And that's what a lot of people did who had Xbox Live. They upgraded. Now, the caveat is, is you cannot cancel xbox game pass ultimate and just revert back to xbox live gold you will lose all that time so if you're halfway into a year of xbox game pass ultimate and going you know what man i don't want game pass anymore i just want xbox live well you're gonna have you lose the rest of that year you cancel your ultimate and then you got to resubscribe as xbox live 
That's one of the reasons why they wanted to increase Xbox Live because they don't want you to go back. They want you to stay on Game Pass. So for all those guys and girls that signed up for Game Pass Ultimate and they're like, you know what? The content in Game Pass is really not there. I just want to play online. I just want my Call of Duties. I just want this. When they said, I don't want Ultimate anymore, when they went came back home, guess what? Phil changed the house around. Xbox Live has a new color. Xbox Live now is, 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 is slapping your ass because Xbox Live was going to be more money. So that was a way of them ensuring that people will not revert back. Not only do you lose your, your, your stack, but you also go back to Xbox Live. So that was one of the reasons. They wanted to make Xbox Live more expensive. So if people want to stack anymore, then they might um, go back and go, oh, crap, wait a second, it's 120 a year. Holy shit, that $340 for three. Oh, I don't, I don't think I'm going back. I'll just stay with Ultimate. That's why a lot of people call them out saying, you're forcing people to go to Xbox Live Ultimate because you're making Xbox Live so expensive. Not even people who want to just stay on Xbox Live, they will pay more money because that's all they want. But people who want Ultimate are not going to come back and not pay $5 a month. What's up, Judah? How you doing? Thank you, Buck. So, they're in a conundrum. Uh, who said it? The Captain Crunch said it. They're in a conundrum. They're in a situation where if you launch it in Game Pass, they're not going to buy the game. If, oh my God, guys, we are one subscriber away from 700. Holy crap, guys. Thank you so much. We need we need another another clip. I need another clip. Means when I think about Xbox, I'm going to think about quality games. We have work to do there. We haven't done our best work over the last few years with our first party output. I'm, yeah, I've that's said always that that's always been a hit on the company on that. Whenever I hear some criticism, yeah, not I don't the, know if I'd say always. Like I think we've gone through not times. Not to throw mud on you, but but I have to know that is that that's a fair. Yeah, I, I think it's something fair to say. It yeah. is. It is fair to say. And and may the Schwartz God bless be with you. Dude. That interview, golden. But the thing is, they're in a conundrum right now. My opinion is that they're going to make these games multiply. They're going to do exactly what they're doing with Psychonauts 2. They are they're going to do exactly what they're going to do with, um, with Wasteland 3 they already did. They're going to do this because they know that if they just launch it in Game Pass, they're gonna be they're gonna be and if they want to lose that much money, they're gonna lose that much money. Thanks, Ghost. <laughs> I appreciate it. But like they're gonna lose that money. So they're gonna have to put it on everything. And I'm sure Starfield for as long as it's been in development, it we see a logo right now. That game is probably multiplied. And he said a case by case basis, we'll see. But the real thing is they need to make it exclusive. But it's up to them to figure out how they make it exclusive and still worth the damn in Game Pass and, and drive people to Game Pass because that's the whole point. The point is getting those subscribers. And you're going to see if they start slowing down, that 18 million now turns into 20, 21, 23, 24, 25. And they're like, yo, man, we're not getting those 10, 10 5 million increases every quarter that we need. Then you're gonna start seeing shit change, and that's and it has changed. Remember, games weren't on Steam before; they had to pivot because nobody wanted to touch that goddamn Windows 10 store, so they had to put their games on Steam. Having the game on Steam completely contradicts them even having the game in Xbox Marketplace on the friggin' Windows 10 store. You're basically you're taking your exclusive game and putting it on a third-party vendor to pay them royalties to buy your game. At launch, you're not even making your shit timed exclusive on Windows 10 Store. You're launching it day and date in Steam. That breaks the whole ecosystem down. So why wouldn't they put their games day and date on PlayStation 5? Or PlayStation 4? Why wouldn't they? they they're destroying themselves on PC and actually they're doing well on PC because of Steam. Because that's where people want to play. Microsoft realized that. 
They can, they're can. they not in the business. The only way they're going to try to get you is into Game Pass. And that's going to be a tall order because people are not ready to subscribe and just live in a subscription. And you know why? You saw what happened early this month when they tried to raise the price of Xbox Live. If they tried to do that and people went ballistic, know what that showed me? That showed me that people don't really care that much about Game Pass because I think Microsoft misread the crowd and thought that people were just going to go, Hooray! Game Pass for the win! Who needs Xbox Live? And that's not what happened. People said, no, you're not increasing my Xbox Live, bitch, because the games that I play are on Xbox Live, and they're not in Game Pass. That's a problem for Microsoft, and that's them not knowing their customer. They could tweet, they could like it, they could wear your t-shirts. But guess what, dude? They have no goddamn clue what the hell gamers want. And now, they're fucked. They are. Now, Xbox Live is same price. Oh, shit. Now the growth of, of Game Pass stagnated. The growth of Game Pass is going to depend on their first party and what their games are going to be. That is it. No four-year-old games, no six-month-old games going into Game Pass. All those are, like, nice. Just like how Game Pass was, just like how Xbox Live and... And, 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 you know, I mean, uh, Games with Gold and PlayStation Plus. Oh, that's nice. Ooh, it has my main games. Those are just, it's nice games. Microsoft is going to take somebody who has main games and try to say, guess what, dude? You better like the What's Nice games because that's the only game that you're getting is the What's Nice games. The games you wouldn't buy. The games you really don't care about. The games that have zero marketing. The games that came out and you didn't even know they came out and now they're showing up five months later on your doorstep. Those, those, th that mentality, you're basically selling people used goods. You're basically like creating a business. You're basically like a GameStop. You're basically creating your business off of used shit. It's the new stuff that gets people in. GameStop gets people in the doors with their used games. Mm. They pre-order the new games. The new games are the way to get you in the store. Then when you're there... They harass you with all the bullshit of used games and, and insurance and clean your games if your dog eats it and all that horse shit. Whatever. All I'm saying is that they should be exclusive. Microsoft should buy a company and say, guess what? Exclusive games only on Xbox. But there's this part of us. Enjoy. Game Pass or bust. But they didn't come out and say that. But when Insomniac was bought by Sony, Sony's like, bitch, you're never seeing Spider-Man ever again. Enough from me. We're going to have the games do our talking. He's like, bitch, you're never going to see it again. We're done. That's right. Nobody asked, where's Spider-Man? Nobody said, Insomniac, are you making games Sunset for Xbox? No. Sony buys you. You're a Sony studio. You make Sony games. Simple as that. That's why when Sony makes a move for studios, it's a big deal because we know the impact that studio is going to have. On top of that, Insomniac was purchased a year after Phil Ness did all of his purchases, all of his, purchase, his initial purchases, right? Take a drink. I said Phil Ness. Basically, Somniac has put out a Miles Morales game, which ranked in the top 10 as DLC, I guess, Hive Busters crew, yeah, whatever. Miles Morales ranked top sales. And a Ratchet and Clank coming out on June 11th, which brings me to my next topic. Insomniac is going to release two games... Within six months of each other, a studio that was purchased in 2019 by Sony after they made the hit Spider-Man in 2018. So we got 2018, 2018, one game. Then we got just two years later, Miles Morales. And then six months after that, Ratchet and Clank on June 11th. Now that's a fucking purchase. 
And that's a purchase that we benefit from. That's not looking at financials. That's not saying Sony spent $3.5 billion, so these games have to come to Xbox or have to come to Sony. No. That is just they bought a studio and they brought us some goddamn games. Nobody's counting, oh, guys, it, what happened to the whole, it, guys, it takes years. Guys, it takes a half a decade to make a game. Decades. It takes decades to make games. Microsoft took these studios. They, they're taking decades. They, they got five years at least. Five years at least. You know what? Ghost of New Orleans 2. Spider-Man Remake. And Spider-Man Remake. You're right. And they remade the goddamn Spider-Man game. You're right. That's four games. If you want cold remakes. Jesus. They didn't even make remakes or redos. Like, think about it. Imagine if Microsoft, this is where I, I go with this whole, if you want to compare studios, and this is probably a, a talk for another time, but like, if you want to compare what one studio did compared to the five that Microsoft purchased in 2018, the five studios produced bleeding ass, grounded in preview. That's it. Since 2018. Three years ago. They made Bleeding Edge. And Grounded. In preview. That they just added. Some more content into Grounded. Bees and Mosquitoes. Oh my god. Premium content. Stay tuned. We might add the uh, wasps. What are we doing? Hellblade got that hipster looking guy. That guy at Ninja Theory going, we're making some steps. Yes, we want to stay small and nimble. I'm making some steps. I'm making Hellblade. We took on vacation. We went to vacation. How about you take Hellblade 1 and you remake that shit for the Xbox Series X? Why wasn't that at launch? Why wasn't that announced for this year? Hellblade Remake. Hey, what's up, Jamal? It is a booty problem. Like, this is the stuff that people don't ask. Why wouldn't you make a remake to Hellblade while we wait for Hellblade 2? Don't do developer diaries. Give us a frigging game. And then on top of that, they did give us a game. They gave us Bleeding Edge that they stopped updating in July after it released in April or May. Or with March or something like that. And, hey, what's up, Game Persona? What's up, man? I gotta get you on here, the show. I go on your show, too, man. We gotta hang out. I know, it's crazy, right? But this is the stuff that people don't ask. Ratchet comes out June 11th. Like, how the hell does Phil... or Somebody subscribe. Somebody subscribe. Hit that 700. Hit that 700. Never underestimate the power of the Schwartz. Like, what? Why in booty go in there? Open up those booty cheeks. And go, we need games. Bleeding Edge is done. They're not supporting it anymore. No more characters. Enjoy your three maps. That doesn't sound successful as a service game. As a game that's in a subscription. That doesn't sound like like a game that's like, wow. Game Pass really get this game some, like, some legs. It didn't. It killed off earlier than anything. You can say the same thing with Gears 4 and Gears 5. Game Pass is not given the legs, man. It's supposed to because the game's always in your library. But it's covered by the noise and the bullshit. But Game Pass is the best value in gaming, they say. But it was a waste. That's right, gaming. It was a gaming persona. It was a waste. Bleeding Edge? Just to have it die. Not even a year later. No content. They gone ghost. They didn't say anything. This could have been a, a rogue company. No, they they killed it. 
all the games at E3 announcements. Minecraft Go on the friggin' phone. Gears Pop was a goddamn E3 stage announcement. Done. Shut it down. Minecraft Earth was on Apple stage. What they were playing with the Minecraft people was showing the iPad and, and jerking around looking at a friggin' a Minecraft tree and bullshit getting hit by a goddamn car. Done. Shut it down. Shut down Gears Pop. Shut down Minecraft Go. Shut down Bleeding Edge. Oh, but we added some bees and mosquitoes to that preview game Grounded. That we charged. That's friggin'. We added some, some ants and spiders. They still don't have a story because you guys got to figure it out. But look at the development of those studios and what they're doing. And how the hell has Insomniac released four things? Four things. Spider-Man, Spider-Man Remastered, if you want to count that, Miles Morales, and Ratchet in June 11. And tell me who should be buying studios and why Microsoft buying studios means nothing. It's more about creating pretty photoshops. Oh, look at all these studios. Let me make a shirt and show. Well, if I saw somebody wearing a shirt with Microsoft Studios on it, they would get slapped up the face. Who's this? I hear somebody. Somebody must have came into my rant. Wait a second. I got, I got to get you in here. Hold on. Let me come through the microphone. Let me see who this right. could be. The one and only. The OJ Dubs. Guys, I put out the bat signal. I put out the grind the signal. J Dave came running in here on my uh my monologue. What's up, J Dubs? How are you doing? Uh doing pretty good, man. You're doing pretty good. Podcasting carousels, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dude. dude, so yeah. You heard the studios. You know what's going <laughs> dude. We're on the Ratchet and Clank, man. June eleventh. What do you think? Uh, uh, for one, can you uh, can you hear me clearly? I yeah. want to make sure you can hear me. I can, make sure yeah, I'm not guys, biting. can you hear J Dub? Uh, I think I think you're biting. Uh, I'm, oh, I'm, am I biting? I can barely. I can hear every other word from you. Uh oh, yeah. hold on. Maybe my Discord. Both man signals live. Hold on. I think. Hello. Hello. All right. I think I'm good right okay. now. I hear you. Yeah, I hear you now. Perfect. Okay, perfect. Good. Perfect. Yeah, man. Um, listen. Let's call it what it is, man. Microsoft, they sat on their hands for three straight years, and they're three years behind Nintendo and Sony. Mm -hmm. And, you know, yeah, they they they, they bought Bethesda. Uh, well, they bought ZeniMax. Yes. And, um, but uh, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm feeling just like David Jaffe. Just, just like mm -hmm. David Jaffe said, it's like, yeah, you can buy all these studios and stuff like that but you guys are not good at managing any of it the <laughs> issue that microsoft has right now they have a management issue that's that's what they have they can't manage their the studios that they have uh right. look at halo right their biggest ip ever yep their, their biggest ip they fumble with that gears haven't been putting it out like they look like like lost Rod Ferguson. They've basically lost the head head guy of every one of their studios that they've had. I was gonna um, get into that for the grind table, the next year. topic. Yeah, definitely. And that takes us right into the whole thing with the, the Drew Murray leaving. So like Drew Murray, um so when he left the initiative, he started up the initiative what in twenty eighteen when they announced the initiative, right? And uh he was pulled over from uh working on did he work? He worked on. He worked with Insomniac, and he worked on Sunset Overdrive, and he went over to Initiative and was able to build a team for two years of 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 this team, right? And you can tell from yeah. the thumbnail he was showing fill the game and all this other stuff. So he built this team, and about a couple about a month ago, he announced after they announced Perfect Dark, they showed the trailer to Perfect Dark. No gameplay. We don't have anything about it. We knew it was Perfect Dark for over a year and a half, like from rumors and stuff. But they finally confirmed it. They showed it. And then he comes out and says, uh, hey, I am uh, leaving. Like, I'm done. And we're like, whoa, you're supposed to be just getting started, man. What do you mean you're leaving the, the initiative? You helped build it. Um, and a lot of people just are like, hey, you know what? Like, here's the tweet right here. 
And the way he did make his tweet sound like people said that he did lose some family or his brother something, I think, a couple months ago. They thought he was taking a sabbatical or he was taking a mental break. Um, so a lot of people turned it into a personal thing that they were saying that he was leaving, he was stepping away. And this was the, the, the tweet. Um, and everybody's like, oh, well, you're insensitive. You shouldn't. People, like I saw people again in, in their feelings about like, hey, you know, he's just taking a break because he lost some family. And, you know, he did. But to find out today, he was just getting a better job. Yep. And today, so I guess he found himself, and he found himself over in on Team Blue with Insomniac Studios, the the, the Spider Web. They pulled him in with their Spider Man. But Jada, what? Yeah. And I saw you going wild today. And here's his thing. Listen. <laughs> Let me tell you this, man. These Xbox dudes, they tried to counsel people over this guy mm-hmm. leaving yes, and yeah, going yeah. over. They 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 tried to, you know, when, when he said, hey, I'm going to step down and, and, and this and this and that, take a vacation or something with my family. They tried to counsel a couple of people and, and stuff like that. Now, today, they're eating crow. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. Man. They, uh, they, it, it's the the guy. Let's face it. The guy went over to the Microsoft. He saw he had a losing deal. He saw how they managed studios. He saw what projects they had. He saw all the insider information, and he wanted to get Ghost. He had a great. He, he sees he had a great deal with Insomniac. These guys are working on IPs that actually matter. You know, game of the year winners and contenders. And uh, he wants to be a part of a winning team. Everybody wants to be a part of a winning team, man. So. They can't they can't get mad at that. But it just shows you it's not just this guy here, right? It's not just this guy. This is just one guy. But it's various guys. Mm-hmm. It's various guys from various studios. Rod Ferguson, he blazed. He got the hell out of there. Yeah. Uh Mikey Barra got the hell out of there. Who else? We got uh yeah, I mean uh, you got the head of three four three um left. The you know Rod Ferguson and even yeah, after that Rod guy, Ferguson and then left, they brought in Staten, Staten to fix that yeah. thing up. Like obviously, there's a just like what Jaffe said in that tweet. There is a management yeah. issue there, and, and you know David Jaffe did this, and I'm gonna I just have him sharing my screen here. Let me get what Jaffe said, and you know he's been saying this, um, you know, and he had this this tweet to say uh, where is it? He says here. Yeah. He goes, hey, so now he's going back to Insomniac. Not a thing wrong with that. Fantastic news. But when is the point someone high up in Microsoft steps in and says, you Xbox guys need someone else managing product development? It's way past time. This has gone from embarrassing to baffling. And J. Dabala, like your hilarious laugh there, because that is hilarious in the fact that it's totally true. There is, and, and, and I think you made a point. I think I heard you saying this on a, either a tweet or something where you said, just look at what they did with him. I think it was last week when we were talking about Halo. Like, who approved and thought that was acceptable for Halo? Exactly. That, that, again, everyone wants to blame everyone else except Phil. Nobody, for some reason, nobody wants to blame the head man in charge. Yeah. It's always blame this guy, blame that guy, but Phil is the protected he's a protected species, man. <laughs> you is. can talk about anybody you want to, but you cannot talk about Phil. And oh, yeah. Phil's baby. Yeah, you can't. You can't. Yeah, it's you know. I, I don't understand I don't know, man. what yeah, I don't understand what um there there's an issue there. There's a there's a pivot. And there's stuff going on because and just like while speaking about right before you came on in the fact that you look at Insomniac and you look at how they're being managed and what they're producing in the same amount of time, actually less time than the studios that Microsoft purchased. The initiative, yes, they built it from the ground up, but like Hellblade, I was just saying just Ninja Theory, why wouldn't they make a remake? Why why wouldn't they root a remake Hellblade for preparation for the Xbox Series X and like, you know, jack that thing up, make it look awesome and and put that on there to kind of get people right. Like, where are the games? And that's the problem. People keep talking about the studios, but you got to say, where are the games? And people say it takes time. Five years, four, six years. Are you kidding me? Look what Insomniac is doing in that short amount of time. Hell, we're going to get two, possibly two full uh, games of Horizon Zero Dawn before one goddamn game of Halo comes out. Yeah. 
Like, w- uh, what the hell is going on? The management of the studios. And I think Halo really showed me there's some shit going down there. Them bringing Joseph Staten in, them not realizing that Halo looked like trash and thinking that that was acceptable and that looked like my first Halo game, like a fan made, uh, like a fan made game. And the fact well, that they Jeff, show that it was horrible. I, I'm a, I'm gonna tell you this here, right? This is why, I, again, I blame Phil because somebody has to be constantly testing these games and going and visiting these studios and playing the games and figuring out what's good or what's not. The mere fact that Phil, right? Let's go in the past. Phil said that. Um, counseling Scalebound was good for the gamer. Yeah. The fact that he said that he wanted Crackdown to be right there next to Gears and Halo. Um, and we can keep going on and on with all his sayings and the stuff, the quality. He, you know, uh, uh, what's the Phantom Phantom Dust oh, with Phantom the original Dust. assets? Oh, yeah. Battle Toads with Battle Toads without with, online. you know. Yeah. Like, what are they doing? Like, Battle Toads without online. Made by, oh, it's an indie studio. Like, are you kidding no. me? Like, the, launching mistakes exactly listen launching not one not two but three consoles the xbox one x the xbox series x and the xbox series s with no games this is it that's a that's a habit that microsoft have launching these consoles with no games like so somebody has to take responsibility for that right somebody's making the decision oh don't worry about it we'll just throw the shit out there Give them some controllers. They'll eat it up, right? Somebody has to be aware of that. I'm sure they're aware of it. I just don't think that they either, A, they don't give a fuck, or B, they know the fan base is going to be there regardless, no matter what they do. So they feel comfortable with doing stuff like that. That's something that Sony or Nintendo could not get away with. No. No way. You know, they could not get away with launching a console with no games, whether you like them or not, right? Sony launched day one with seven games specifically for the PlayStation yeah. 5 uh, platform with all the ray tracing and all and the other. There was no COVID you know, issues, no size that we're working yes. remotely. We can't, sorry, yes. we're unable to get this content yep. in there. They launched all those games and they still had Destruction All Stars come out. Even though it got delayed, it still came out in February, as they said, they didn't delay it. Came out in the launch window. It came out, it in, still the came out in the launch Ratchet's window. Ratchet's coming yeah. out in June. Like, Yep. The thing is, is that they were able to get the, their, their, their shit going for their console and have things ready. Make Microsoft, the one who couldn't shut up. This is the problem I have, Jay. They couldn't. Sh- they don't shut up. They keep talking out their ass, making more podcasts, interviewing people, saying the stuff I'm excited about what I can't tell you. Then why are you doing a goddamn interview is what I say. That If you can't talk about anything and they just don't shut up. And meanwhile, they're the yeah. ones that were ill-prepared. They were talking. We knew project names. I didn't know the project name yeah. of PS5. We knew Project exactly. Scorpio, Project Scarlet, Project Scorpios. We knew project names. That's how long they've been talking about this shit. You'd think they would be prepared. Yeah, I agree. Like they, they came I out agree. with their hands between their legs. They're like, uh, uh, the Halo was... And they, and they came out so messed up that they had Halo on everything but a friggin' uh, energy drink. And on the box, yeah. the console. Yep. That's how clueless now, they were. Now, here's the thing, Jess. This is a big... Maybe, you know, and I thought about this long and hard. Pause, but... <laughs> is it... Pause. Is it... Is it a chance right that we see an issue with this whereas microsoft doesn't see an issue you know microsoft paints a picture of you know roses and 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 you know and 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 just everything is fine you know everything is fine we're great and this and that they paint this they paint this picture whereas the gamers are sitting there with a 500 dollar console with nothing to play but old games and, and Microsoft has put, been putting a lot of research and development and a lot of development time on up resing on uh, doubling and tripling and quadrupling the frame rates of Xbox 360 games. Right. Mm-hmm. So why are you putting all that development time into old stuff when you should be focusing on the new stuff? A lot of people are not seeing that. That worries me. Yeah. I told if you. I see Sony, Working, working on nothing, nothing new, right? They're just working on nothing but the old stuff. You know, I want to remaster. You know, let's say not not remaster, but we're gonna take uh, PS2 games and 
double the frame and triple the frame and doing all of this, and they have no roadmap, no no release of 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 any games coming out in the near future, no dates, no nothing, no trajectory. You know, they just tell you, hey, we're gonna have some games in three or four years or whatever, just open ended. I would have a problem with that. Mm-hmm. Agreed. I would have a problem with that, right? But Microsoft can sit here. We don't know when the next game is coming out from them, right? We don't have any dates. Nope. We hope, you know, we we, we hope Halo will hit, but we don't have a, a exact date. We hope Halo, but shit, we got to wait to the end of the year to find out. We got to wait to holiday. And on top of that, Christmas. they're talking about day one guns, dude. I've been going crazy about this. They're talking about game. They don't know. They're going to give you launch guns, and they're going to figure out when to give you the classic Magnum and shotgun. I'm like, you've been oh delayed a gosh. year, See, dude. I didn't know that. Oh, you didn't know I didn't that? Know that, that. freaking interview from that guy, that, man? Dude, Yo. you're sitting up here telling me I'm going to have to... <laughs> Oh my god! Wait, yo, like, you didn't hear not... that interview from that dude? Holy I, crap! No, nah, I, I did. Oh man, yeah. Wait, what is it? The Halo? So you're telling me I'm gonna have all these microtransactions and all of this the services shit, right? Halo is After... not gonna be launched as a full game, basically. And I'm talking. He was talking about everything, like campaign and yeah. multiplayer, dude. He was saying day one gun. So like they they said this back in July when the game was announced they were saying about how the classic shotgun and magnum are not going to be there at launch instead you got this bulldog and this other one and they're going to find out ways to introduce the classic weapons into the what? game at a later date they said that in July Man. of last year right in the in yes. the the yo I'm t- <laughs> I got how, the- listen how is it possible what you telling me is how the hell is it possible that this game was literally going to launch last year how? What what kind of game were, were they going to launch last year if we wouldn't have made a, a uproar about it? What the hell were we... I mean, what kind of game were they going to deliver? Dude, I, I talked about... It. Like, that's... <laughs> it's, yeah, dude, right? What are we, dude, you what are we hear, doing here? I don't know if you could hear the thing, but I got the video from my... Different. Here, wait. Where mm-hmm. is he? I got my video. You're going to hear two grinds my gears team? here. Hold on. Okay. Right here. So I got to highlight I hear it. it here. I hear it now. All right, one second. Let me get to the video. So this is my... Yeah, here we go. Wait, this guy says it here. So this is the the sandbox. Remember they're doing this whole the sandbox thing? So he says it right here. Mm-hmm. Wait, let's see if I can get it. Okay. Let's see. The next question. So obviously. He says here about the. Hear this. Do you simply mean fighting someone in combat for an equipment pickup? Or no, does this that's mean. That's not it. Hold on. I'm going to have to find it for a second. So just bear Here's with me. So a little bit. It. Yeah, th- but. But it's it's just crazy, man. Like, I'm gonna say, they, well, we're gonna add this. Halo Infinity this. is on the X Series X box, right? It's we're literally on the, the box. Yet we don't have any game. Yet the game that they were gonna deliver back in November tenth of twenty twenty, you're telling me none of the shit would have been in there. And even no ray tracing wasn't going to be in the game at launch, oh, right? Oh yeah, the ray tracing, yeah. Right. So now you're telling me. A lot of the guns aren't going to be there. And even now, a whole year later, coming up to a whole year later, it's not going to launch with the basic guns that we had from the previous games? Like, Nope. Here we this go. This sounds like a disaster. I found okay, it. I'll be quiet here and we'll listen to it. Uh, here we can hear it. Ready? Grinders, get ready. ...will be added. And they're referencing a quote from our Halo Infinite blog. So, the Halo Infinite blog. So here, I'm just going to read. This is the question that they asked him. But wait, there's more. No. <laughs> hear myself. <laughs> I'm confused about the line weapons on day one will assuredly be different after multiple updates and patches. Doesn't this mean the weapons included in the base game in the 1.0 version will be altered or simply that new weapons will be added? And they're referencing a quote from our Halo Infinite blog. So in short, the answer is yes to both. We are going to have weapons that are altered, the weapons that launched the game originally. Those will be altered over time, and then we're definitely going to be introducing new weapons. Uh, Brand new weapons, never before seen weapons, classic weapons, legacy weapons, all those kind of things will be. So he says classic weapons here. They're withholding these weapons to release them over time, okay? Now why? Let's hear why. I want to know why, why we have all these, like... New weapons, legacy weapons, never before seen weapons. Why? Let me let me ask why. Why do you think grinders? Shout out to over forty people watching. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe. Oh, stop button it, grinds! Keep, hit that play We're button. We're grinding gears right now. <laughs> Looking at and discussing and figuring out what the game needs at that time. But just to just I guess to clarify a little what bit the game with needs at that time. 
altered weapons that go out day one. When we say alter, we're, we're primarily going to be looking at things that are meta shifting and tuning knobs, but we're going to do everything we can. And, and I guess previous to my to the last answer and the other question is, we're going to keep weapons, the feel of the weapons, the same and the roles of the weapons. We're not going to take a weapon and change its role all up. Uh, we're not going to uh, change the feel of the weapon. The BR-75 is going to play like the BR-75. It's going to have that three round burst. It's going to have that cadence. But we'll be looking at things, uh, for example, the like the damage output. For example, okay. Or perhaps maybe the Wait, accuracy. He's not done. There'd be some things that we that it will change over time, or maybe max ammo carried in it, uh, or or Looks maybe like the ammo this shit out. Just you pick up on. Oh my god! I said it at the same time. I said it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Knobs. He don't really know. To maintain Shiny the roles and the feel. <laughs> yeah. He don't. Re he don't really know. When we say he alter, don't really know. Those are the things we're gonna try Jump to stay away from. Yeah. Yo, don't make it up as they go. Never say never. Yeah. Crazier things have happened, and you know, there's this is a service game, so we'll have to see as as we go. But anything that does change, we will communicate to you as the players, the what and the why, always. Very cool. So that's. Do you hear? This is a service game. We're gonna figure out as we go. Jay, what the hell? Is, what is this? This is their biggest IP ever, man. This like, I'm and not it's gonna, delayed a year, I'm dude. Not... It's delayed a year, and this this interview came out two weeks ago. This didn't come yeah, out last this... year. Two weeks ago. So uh, so now. Oh, there's more Jeff, of that thing. You, but anyway, can you see why people would in a work environment like that with no sense of direction and don't know what the fuck going on? Now, can you see why they're jumping ship I and see, going I elsewhere? See. Yeah. I would rather work on Spider Man. Um, I would rather work on a Sunset Overdrive two or a uh, Miles Morales game or a Ratchet and Clank or something with stability. Something I know is going to be great. Not this. We'll figure it out with the service microtransaction type crap later. Yeah. This. This. Listen. They wanted to say. It sounds like what they're going to do with Halo is what they wanted for Bleeding Edge, right? Or, or what they want. Sea of Thieves. Sea of Thieves. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Bingo. Guess what, guys? We'll fix it later. Yeah, well, we'll listen to you guys. He even It'll goes on about later. the classic Magnum. He goes, "Well, we're gonna figure out when's a good time to launch the, you know, the classic weapons." And I'm like, "How about a launch of the game? What do you mean you're gonna figure out when? What? Six months later, Major Nelson's gonna do a blog going, guys, we're adding the classic weapons. We heard you." No, what's hilarious is that people said this in July, and I would. This is the whole video that I did here. But then again. We have this this thing, and the guy goes, "I'm. Re what are you excited about? What equipment?" And he goes, "We haven't. We have some really exciting equipment we haven't shown yet. But the grapple shop is the grapple shop's my favorite." I'm like, "Why is there this sense of just uncertainty and complacency when this game is delayed a year? You have to really. You can't go back to the drawing board. This shit should have came out last year at this time when we expected Halo to come out 2020." What is and it sounds like they're just kind of flapping around like a dead goddamn fish, and you wonder why people are leaving. You're right. You wonder why people are leaving. And another clip that I had queued up is uh, and that was just an impromptu thing because yeah, you got to watch that interview. I'll send you the link of that interview. But my God, like this is the other clip that I had queued up here. You talked about Rod Ferguson, right? And he did this interview after Gears Five was announced at E3 in 2018. This guy was all in on Gears. He had a meta of Gears. They had a movie, the comics. He was in bed with Gears. Yep. He picked up yep. and left. He just left. Yep. And he, I just want you to hear the passion in his voice about what Rod Ferguson wanted to do. You kind of touched on. And, yeah. and this is the one thing I wanted you to listen to, Jay. I'm so glad you came on. Thank you again, because I want you to hear this. Because Ryan McCaffrey asks him, Will the Coalition work on other games besides Gears of War? And listen to what Rod's answer says. This might be a sneak peek as to maybe why he, he I don't left. know, just maybe why he left. Or like, I don't understand why he left. Because if it was all Gears all the time, he was all about it. And the fact that he left his favorite franchise, which he was brought in for, and had movies and comics and all these things that he was saying in this interview, 
to then just kind of just leave after Gears 5 gets now uh, releases. It's crazy. But okay. hear this about the freedom of creation. And uh, maybe this is why Drew Murray is like, you know, I wanted to make an amazing game. and feels like it got to be Perfect Doc. And it's like, ee, that's not, I didn't want to work yep. on some old-ass franchise. And I think I said this before, but we'll, after, we'll talk about it after this. Let me hear this. Thing. Okay. Microsoft Studio Culture earlier. And yeah. that's something that we've heard a lot about over the last year from Microsoft of, yeah. Hey, we're acquiring studios. We're starting new studios. We want to let everybody just be themselves yeah. and do their thing. I talked to Matt Booty about that at Very E3. Uh, so, you know, I, I would be remiss if I didn't ask you, you know, yes, you're the Gears studio, but could there come a time, uh, whether it's after this sort of natural arc of Gears wraps up, whenever that's, if that's after this game or the next game or the one after that, right? but, you know, would you guys be able to or, and be interested in doing a new IP, maybe a, a, in addition to Gears at some point? Is that something that could be in your studio's roadmap? Or, or is it, hey, you're sign on to work at the Coalition, we're, do, we're all Gears all the time? Uh, I mean, I'm, the, it's a terrible answer, but it's just a never say never thing, right? Yeah. I think the, we're the Coalition and we wanted to brand ourselves around the franchise because we were looking at like Turn 10 and we were looking at 343 and going, okay, these are dedicated studios to a dedicated franchise um, and so we are very dedicated to the Gears of War franchise but that's not to say we won't do other things. I think when I signed on in 2014 we, I had no idea we were going to do a pop based mobile game <laughs> right? and so way, I think as we look beyond you know one of the yeah, things about keeping that. key creative talent is you potentially want to go and do other things creatively so but right now it's really it is all Gears all the time and, and the fact that we're able to go to all the different places with comic books and novels and movies and three different games like it, it's a lot so I don't like the idea of like, hey, I, I'm, I laugh and I mean, I enjoy the passion, but I laugh when people go like, so you're going to remaster Gears 2? And I'm like, really busy right now. <laughs> like, I, I, I really appreciate your love for Gears 2 and I love Gears 2 as well, but I just don't have the time right now. So I do. But you hear why he don't have the time. I mean, this is the thing that bothered me. He says, oh, I'm making three different games. One was Gears Tactics. One was Gears 5. One was Gears Pop. And then he has novels, movies, and 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 uh, comic books. I don't have time to remake Gears Two. What are we doing here, Jay? That's what the people want. They want games. Yeah. They don't want all this other bullshit. Because look, Gears Pop got shut a year later. It's done. A year yep. and a half later, it's gone. That that thing that he was working on that he didn't have the time to make you Gears Two remastered because he was making goddamn Gears Pop, the comics, the movies, the the, the all these things. Nobody gives a shit about that. They want Gears 2 remade. But uh, you don't have the time. This is the disconnect. You heard it. Yep. He don't have the time. Why? Because you're making seven games? No. I'm making one game that people want, Gears 5. Gears Tactics would have a PC exclusive for over six months. Oh, and Gears Pop, which you see how Microsoft supported that. It's shut down. They shut down a friggin' mobile game. How the hell bad does a mobile game have to be where you shut it down when the thing's sustained on the microtransactions? How the hell do you shut yeah. down a mobile game? But you hear, uh, it's horrible. Listen, I'm a t listen. It, it, it's just like bankrupting a casino, right? If you're doing <laughs> it wrong, anything can happen. So... I, I do. Oh, man. I, I, it, it, again, somebody has to be held accountable for that. Anytime you have the head of a studio leaving, you have to kind of start over and hope that whoever new can come and work with the talent that you already have. Neil Druckmann said it best. You can't just hire a bunch of people and stick them in the room and say, make it work, become a great. He said it takes a long time to develop that, that synergy where you can go out there and cr crank out a bunch of great games consistently, right? And Microsoft, they have no consistency. I mean, hell, the only thing consistent right now with Microsoft is a 69 Metacritic game. They can crank those out consistently. Uh, but there, there's no consistency in the quality of the games. There's no consist consistency in the, the amount of games that they're releasing, right? They normally release, I mean, at this point, two, two three games a year. You know you're going to get a Halo. You know you're going to get a Forza one year. And you know you're going to get a Gears the next year. That's just, it's like clockwork. They only have, you know, they only have those mode of games. And for the people that are going out, oh, but what about Bethesda? But look, they purchased Bethesda. Bethesda was already a fully functioning 
uh, developer and, and you know under under Zenimax. You can't use that just because they drop money and buy them. That just that doesn't guarantee you success because for one, when Bethesda was by themselves, right prior to this, Bethesda put out janky, broken shit. They didn't yeah, put they out did. a bunch of a, a bunch of bangers. They weren't at the highest point when they like Fallout yeah, 76 now, was a was a crack in their armor. <laughs> yeah, that was like a, a what fifty Metacritic game. That was a really low. Oh, now here's the thing. Maybe that's why Microsoft bought them because they figured, you know what? These guys put out janky, buggy games, and they just go and fix on it later, two, three years down the line. Maybe that fits with again, Phil's philosophy. Just throw something out there, work on it. That'll give you three, four years. We'll get some revenue. It's in Game Pass, so and make it great eventually, like they did with uh, Sea of Thieves was, uh, uh, for the Sea of Thieves crowd. Yeah, maybe that's it. You know, maybe maybe that's it. Maybe that's the motto. Maybe that's why. But does the kind of fit into that? You know. Yeah. No, as these are, I, I didn't. I'm just saying, right? I'm talking about the big games. They normally have a Halo. One year, you know, that's a big game. Now, of course, they got your bleeding edges and your battle toes, but do you really want to count those? Um, and, and then the next year, they you, we know we're going to get a Forza Horizon or a Forza Motorsport, right? And well, then they're that, going to give you some that more. that was uncertain. Like, what's going on with Forza, too? Like, again, is the, are they lining up for something Pre-production. The, the game's in pre-production Forza, for the next Forza. Forza yeah, Dude, Forza 8. They're that thing out, like, every, every other year, like, uh, on, like, a routine basis. Like, I don't know. Yeah. See, they're pivoting for something. And what I think is that they're pivoting for Game Pass to be at a sustainable, larger subscription base to release these games that are costing them money. Because I'm telling you, Forza is not cheap for them to make. Halo, we know it's t- costing tons of money for them, you know, to make. Like, these games are costing money. Fable's not cheap. Like, these games cost money. And I think they know by putting these games in a Game Pass with only 18 million people, they're not going to get the people buying it in retail. Uh, they're, because they're not multi-plat games, at least for their first party. Secondly, they're going to have to try to sustain those people, and they might see an up an uptick in one month, but how do you keep those people there? You can't have 18 million, then this shoots up to 28 million when Halo comes out, and then it just goes crashing down like every other game. When when That's why you can't have people just coming in for one game, checking it out, and leaving. That's not, a, that's not the Game Pass model. They got to keep yeah. you in there. For recovering payments, they want recurring payments. So they, yep. uh, yo, dude, they got a whole. Uh, that's why I say, man, people saying like Game Pass is the best. People going like all these studios to buy. They got too much to handle right now. They can't even manage what they got. Nonetheless, twenty three studios. They can't even imagine goddamn three four three. And you think that they are responsible to handle twenty three studios right now? I guarantee you in another two years, you're going to start seeing merging and liquidation, and they're going to combine some of these studios together. There's no way they're sustaining 23 studios. Right now, they're just running with that because they think that's what people want, and that's what... That's all I see all over YouTube and stuff. And I don't talk about specific people, but all you see in every title, new studios, buy uh, you know the exclusive games. And, and I'm like, you click on this stuff and you look at it and go, if your title is true, we should be bathing in Xbox games. All that stuff is hyperbole. None of it, it all of it is rumor, speculation, and most of all, hope. Hope. And that's yep. all they got is hope, hope and potential. There's nothing they're doing right now or what they have done in the last few years to demonstrate anything to me that even makes me say hope. I have no hope in them right now. That's why I need to see because I don't trust them. And when they showed Halo the way it is, if they think that's acceptable, they have no clue what the hell the game is want. And you've seen it. How many times they got to come out and say, I'm sorry. Oh, had we not said anything about the gameplay, we're sorry. How many times are sorry? We're sorry about Halo. We're sorry about the delays. We're sorry about shutting down studios. We're sorry about DRM. We're sorry about charging $500. We're sorry about the the Xbox Live increase. But they're on Twitter. They're doing interviews, dude. They're connected, right? Yep. Again... That's what that's what the fan base wants, right? You can't. I mean, listen. One thing that Phil knows, right? 
and, and he's been successful with is knowing that his fan base will stick behind him through no matter what he does. They stuck behind him when he gave all of their ex- exclusives away to PC and it's a, to Switch and to every other you know other platforms. Um, they stood by him when he said that taking games away from them was great for him. Um, they stood by him through this whole Halo debacle. Um, they stood by him with launching an Xbox One mm-hmm. X, the world's most powerful console, with no games. They stood by him with him launching the Series S and the Series X with no games. There's nothing that Phil can do that's going to change. That's going to you know change their perception of him. Uh, according to you know, it's it, we've been saying this. Someone has to take the blame, and generally in every corporation, it's the head guy, the guy that says yay and nay. Yes. Feels that guy. You can't blame anyone else. So, and Booty, again, kudos, he, Phil. That listen, booty? Uh, listen, Matt Booty's doing whatever he's doing, but even at, even at the end of the day, right, Matt Booty is not the head guy. Oh, Phil I know. Is. You, can't, you can't keep firing everybody else except the head guy, right? <laughs> and I, I tried to tell people a long time ago when Donnie D was there, you know, in corporations, what generally happen if you get rid of the head guy, you get rid of the head, the people that he hired. Yes. Because he built up that culture. And if that culture is still there with everybody that's under him, you're still going to have the same problems. Yeah. So it's, it's just like a coach, right, of an NFL team or basketball, baseball, whatever. You hire a coach, he puts his team together, his own team. That's what Drew he Murray did. He goes out and hired. And then left it. after exactly. his team was and together and yep. they got a game. Like, what was yep. – like, I don't understand. Like, how you handpicked everybody. You and Daryl Gallagher got together and started putting a team together. And remember, there were only 44 people strong, too. It's not like they, they had 200 people under their belt. I remember I used to joke, actually, guys, I want to shout out to all the grinders right now. We're at over 73 people watching. We are bigger than the coal, than the initiative. We're bigger than the initiative because the initiative was 45 people. I used to joke and say we're double A. We're banger status. We're double banger status right now. We have more people in viewing this show than work at the initiative. And actually minus one because Drew Murray left. But the thing is, they weren't a big group. They weren't a huge group of... of, of, uh, They were 44 people. And the guy who put them together and hired them after they announced their game. Jay, they announced the game a few months ago. Perfect doc. Everybody on board? Yes, yes, yes. No, I'm leaving. Huh? Okay. And then, oh, he's like, I understand if it was personal reasons and stuff like that. And, you know, he went off into the sunset and did what he had to do. But for the guy to come back now and go, he left that place to go work at Insomniac, the company that he used to work for, who's pumping out three games in the last four years, showing mm-hmm. product. Because the thing is, is, this is the thing. Maybe he sees that Perfect Dark has long legs. Maybe he thinks that this thing's not coming for a while. You know, if you work in in a in a in an area where you're constantly building and building and building, but you don't see the results, you just go into this vicious cycle of like I'm always in discovery, I'm always in building and building, but I don't see an end in sight. I don't see an end product, and maybe for him, he sees Insomniac showing end product results learning moving on results moving learning on next game next game next game next ip let's go let's go and he sees this perfect doc as just a kind of like hey we're gonna do day one weapons and perfect doc hey we're gonna you know we'll figure it out and hear the feedback and put in the weapons that you want and tell them to what you think just like the nasher for two years their children are trying to figure out how to tune the goddamn nasher in gears five we're figuring it out. Just see if these we're adding some content. Like what it, we're adding bees and mosquitoes to grounded. Obsidian. Dude, there was another video. Obsidian Studios. The guy's like, you know us for creating wonderful narrative driven games. Talks about grounded and goes, We're gonna have you tell us what you want in the story. Oh my God. Dude. See, what what, 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 what yeah. Like, like you are known for narrative games, but meanwhile, you have no narrative in Grounded because it's a preview game. That's counter to what your studio's about. I don't even know, man. Like, what do you think? Like, do you see that there is just some sort of strange stuff going on with all these studios that I think people are not seeing this stuff? And I think it's just evident, but people just don't want to see it, maybe. 
in this thing. Isn't it ironic, right, that everybody can see, most of the people can see exactly what's going on except the people that need to see it, the people that need to make the demands right. and, and yeah. the change? Just merely, what, a month ago, these guys, Phil tried to jack the price of Xbox Live up, what, a hundredfold? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and... Um, how would you, how do you call it? How like how blinded can you be about where you are when it comes to the gamers and the community and what they're looking for, what That's they're asking for, and what, what they need to keep going, right? Now I get it, right? Maybe their motto or their model of what the future lies, maybe that's different. And I understand. Okay, it's different. Microsoft wants to be different and go about creating revenue their own way, right? Maybe it's not by creating a bunch of great games. Maybe it's just about, you know, giving you something to do, um, you know, with their console. Just something. It, it doesn't have to be great. It doesn't have to be a bunch of great games. It's just, just something. Time wasters, right? Maybe Xbox is the next time waster console. You know, maybe it's like Candy Crush, and maybe Phil is happy <laughs> with that. Hey, look, we got a Candy Crush type device. It's just a time waster when you're sitting there at the bus stop with nothing to do. You just pull your phone out and and waste time, right? And, and, and sign up, I guess. Make uh, yeah. money off of yeah. But it's crazy because when you see all these game of the year winners and contenders at the award show, and your name is never called, none of your I, IPs are ever looked at, and like. Don't you feel some kind of way about, hey, man, maybe we should do something to, you know, besides the uh, accessories like controllers and stuff like that. Don't you want to be known for something other than being a laughing stock? Yeah. Well, uh, that's why they try listen, to sabotage those game my, awards, like with news. Microsoft has to, yeah, Microsoft has to be, I mean, they're mediocre at everything. They're not. They used to have the best controller. They don't anymore. The DualSense is controlled by, you know, most of the people that do the, the all the big people that do mm -hmm. pollings and stuff and the technology. Even that, right? They don't even that have that. Too. They don't even have that to hang their hat on anymore. Right? Even their headset. So, why wasn't that at the launch? Like, why are they announcing it and releasing it in March? So weird. Meanwhile, the last headset well, they released was at the launch of the Xbox One, the wired headset. Yeah, I, I it took remember them that long. It, it, but you know what? Maybe maybe it's a reaction. Maybe it's a reaction. They're just saying, hey, Sony's I mean, headset, Sony, maybe. Yeah. yeah, Sony, these headsets, these things, they, they can't stay in stock. You know, people yeah. constantly buying. I mean, again, it just seems like Sony said, look, we're launching with the console. We want to have a vast array of accessories and things for people to have. And I like how they rolled out the PlayStation 5 when they did it with the reveal, right? Yep. Um, before they gave you the price. They gave you the system. They gave you all the accessories and all that stuff right there. Right here, here is what we plan on offering in the the, the near future. Right, he, you know, at launch, and I think that was a great messaging. Microsoft, on the other hand, they threw out the power, 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 and hey, all your old stuff that you had previously, you can just use that as well if you want to, and. Call it a day, and it's I don't know, man. It's two bold, different strategies. Uh, one seemed to be working for me, right? Yep. Um, but who knows? Maybe I'm not, Jez. Maybe you and I are not Microsoft's uh, target. Maybe they're not targeting us. Maybe yeah, they're, they're just targeting, targeting two billion this. people that don't give a shit about any of the games that they're launching. That's the problem. They're targeting people that don't even care about them. The dudes on phones, yeah. the people on Android phones, like. Th th that's the problem. They have lost their way from the gamer. And that's why it affects us because their needs, like, I have a PC, Xbox to play these games. Like, are you kidding me? And the fact that you guys are really that. And, and the thing that gets me is the fact is, is that they seem that the whole reason why they have this, this love fest with Phil and friends is that they're so connected to the people. But you want to know what? They're connected and they gave people their break. Like they're, they're connected with the community. But the thing is, is that if they're so connected and they're hearing in potty chats what people want, then how do they seem so misguided 
and just not listening. When they got their pulse and ears on the ground, more so. I don't see Yoshida going on any podcast. I don't see Yoshida doing an interview with some podcaster, some guy that has like 50,000 subs, and it's like, hey, let me talk to this guy there. No, but what I do see, and also they send out red controllers to all their influences. They send out free Xboxes to everybody. They're connected with the community. But meanwhile, they do dumb shit, and they're not giving the community what they need for their product, which is the games, which is the the moves, you know, and even smart moves like 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 just like what what, what Sony's been doing with their services and making their services have value to them. Microsoft is just sitting there going like, our services are based on our first party, but we're not even telling you what our first party looks like or is. Yeah, and that's the whole difference of game. Like they should be touting first party. Delivery of game, day and date, but they don't have anything because that's the only reason why Game Pass is even talked about is because of the dynamic of what it does to their first party and what is they have been doing to their first party, I think has not been what they want. Like seeing directors leave key people like Rod and and Drew Murray, like, you know, these people leave and what Halo looked like and then Halo looked like what it was and then they shuffled all the bosses around. They got rid of that guy, that commu- that boy, I don't even know, that guy they got rid of and they pulled in Joseph Staten. They had the, and guess what? It's not just Halo. It was Crackdown 3 had issues, delayed after delayed. Yep. And guess what? They showed Crackdown 3. Like Dude, they showed Crackdown 3 at Comic-Con. Had dopey people playing it, not knowing mm-hmm. what was going on. It was glitchy as hell. R- R- Remember right? the cars were humping? Yeah, the cars yeah. were humping. Yeah, exactly. The cars were humping. All this stuff was happening. And meanwhile, right. people fed back to that looks like horrible. That looks horrible. Well, guess what? Before that, Phil and Shannon Loftus said, Crackdown looks great. I'm having boomtastic. Like, it's fun. And meanwhile, they show it. They get negative feedback at that comic event, Comic-Con, where people were playing it. Said, why would you show the game like this? The game looks horrible. And guess what? Never showed at Gamescom. Got delayed. It wasn't coming out in 2017. People said, wait for Gamescom. Got delayed. And then it came out in February with Terry Crews. And guess what? The cloud, three maps, nothing. Move on. All that waiting for Crackdown 3. And what was it? It was it was a fly-by-night, overnight bullshit. that people. Pl- I ran through the campaign and said, eh. And then the, the cloud was hyped up for uh, over half a decade. Wound up being nothing. And guess what? Yeah. If that technology is so great, has anybody else used cloud destruction since Crackdown? Any games we know working on cloud destruction? Any third party using it, actually? No. Again, another UWP, another Connect, another Mixer. This is Microsoft's MO. And there's too much Microsoft in Xbox. Well, I'll just say one thing, man, and it's someone said it perfectly, right? They kind of they said that the initiative uh, was funded three years ago. No gameplay, no nothing to show us, right? Uh, Kojima built a studio alone, hired his employees, developed the game, yeah. and released the game, and it was nominated. Uh, had the most awards of 2019, right? He did that all within fucking 36 months. How is it, right, in Microsoft, again, people love to count the money, world's richest company, uh, got all that money, and yet Sony is, you know, a fraction of a fraction uh, of Microsoft. Um, and, it, and Microsoft just seems to be the, the, the ass end of gaming on all of this stuff. It has to be management, man. It's not the resources. No. It's it has to be management. You're right. It's the people that run these studios because, and and like I said, that interviewer for Halo, the the sandbox guy, like talking about how we're figuring it out and stuff. Like, are you kidding me? This game is delayed a year. Your interview is this, and you're still talking like we're just gonna put something out there on launch, but then we're gonna figure out what, like you know, we're gonna we're gonna hear back and we're gonna find a good time to like what. Dude, you delayed a year. Everything that what was gonna come out last, what was gonna come out? He worked mm-hmm. on Resistance Three, and he's going back to yeah. I think they're yeah. making a Resistance, dude. If he yeah. goes back yep. there and makes a friggin' Resistance before we see Perfect, <laughs> oh, God. Jesus Christ, yeah. You know, the world's gonna melt if this dude goes back to Insomniac and they show gameplay of working on Resistance, and Drew Murray's back there, and 
the initiative is still trying to figure out Perfect Doc. Holy crap. Because no, guess what? He goes... Diego Galga, uh -huh. sorry, I'm just saying, Diego Galga worked on Crystal Dynamics and third person uh, games. He was the first person guru guy, Drew Murray. He worked on Resistance. He knew about first person shooters. Like, he's the one that's leaving, and Perfect Doc is a first person parkour game. I, dude, I don't know. Yeah, Jay, that's all right. Like, I'm just yeah. like. Again, I can't say it enough, man. And only until people like people are gonna have to speak up about this. They're gonna have to say, "Look, man, who in the hell is running these studios? Who's watching out for them? Who's? I mean, again, let's say Phil is not that guy, right? Let's say he's just, hey, Phil is just horrible at managing the studios, right? He's he's a good business guy with getting stuff going and stuff like that, but it's a corporation." If I'm Phil, I'm like, look, let me hire somebody who's known for managing studios. Let me poach somebody from Sony or from Nintendo or for, or from some some other place, right? Who's good at at managing those customer um, developer slash relations and stuff, and uh, hire that guy and put that guy in place to be able to go and tell you know, and 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 find out what's going on, when the dates are gonna come, when some deliverables are gonna be there, uh, who's happy, who's not happy, um, who needs a promotion, who needs uh, you know to go and stuff like that. It's just like people are doing whatever they want anytime they want and they have no sense of urgency and that's the problem. Yeah, I just talked about as it a gamer, about urgency, yeah. As a gamer, I feel like Microsoft has no sense of urgency of putting out anything. Nope. At all. Yep. Yeah, that's so, what I, just said. I I said that. I was like, you know, they think they got all this time in the world and dude, like they don't. Like I'm just looking at Phil's thing like Undead Labs. Like yeah. nothing with State of K three, a trailer, like Ninja Theory, they they're just showing steps. Hellblade two, why didn't they do a remaster ready to go for uh for launch of the Series X? Um Minecraft Dungeons, they had turn ten, which we don't know what the hell what's going on with Forza if that's gonna be announced this year. Compulsion games, what's going on with them? We happy few indie game got released before Phil bought them. What what are they doing? And then what is this Microsoft Global Connections? Like that's Shannon Loftus's group. What's what are they doing? And and you know what? As you said, we said you were saying about the whole disconnect and the whole kind of like scrambling around. I pointed this out before. You have the initiative. They're making perfect doc. You have rare. Why wouldn't you do rare? Oh, they're doing Everwild. Well, I think rare associated with perfect doc know. would be a better connection if you want to hit on those. Those things, right? I'm glad. I'm glad you brought Everwild up, right? Yeah, that too. Right? Because the last time we heard about that game, they still didn't know what the hell they wanted XO it to 19 be. So nineteen was when it was announced two yes. years ago. They said they didn't know what what they were, what direction they were going to go with that, that game last and stuff like that. They so, said that. Yeah, you, you know, man, they don't know don't what know the gameplay is. is, but they got the art, um, I guess. But like the thing is, is like, why would you start up a group that guy makes Tomb Raider and all this stuff and give him perfect and make them make perfect doc? You know, I, I really and that's the thing. Like when you heard the initiative was making perfect doc, I was like them freedom to do whatever they want. That's bullshit. Yeah. There's no way that guy who worked on Tomb Raider and all this stuff came together and told Phil, I want to work on perfect doc. There was nothing going on with that IP. Either Phil gave him a list or. Or somebody said, you, we're paying too much money to build you guys and have you hang out in Santa Monica. You're not going to make some IP game that we have to try to market the hell out of this new IP. You're going to make an IP that people are familiar with and we can easily market. Same thing for the Playground Games. Yep. Why don't you make a new open world game and fantasy game, RPG game, gritty, whatever you want. Why does it have to be Fable? Do you know what you do by putting these these IP names on this? You set up expectations. You set up people thinking that this is the fable. This is perfect doc. And you're going to get people that are going to come in there and be pissed because this is not the perfect doc or the fable that they anticipated because you put those IPs there. You didn't just make these games what they wanted make it be its own thing like horizon zero dawn there was no expectations with horizon zero dawn nobody knew about mechanical dinosaurs people explore that world days gone those characters were created from scratch they weren't some revered ip that people had expectations on but you took these two other studios 
And it's not working with 343, who's a skeleton crew of Bungie, and make them make a game that has some sort of legacy, some sort of thing. The pressure you put on and the expectations, because your marketing team has an easier job, I think is a wrong way to go. I think it's just wrong. Yep. Like, why would, and if you have Rare there, Rareware and the initiative working together, like, even if you put Rare in there, hey, Rare is working on Perfect Dark. Like, why would you have the initiative put their name out there with Perfect Dark where people don't associate those two together? I don't know. Yep. And, and also, making a first person sci fi game. You have Halo as a first person sci fi game. Then you got Turn 10. Then you got uh, Playground making a uh, fable. An open world fantasy game. But wait, you bought Obsidian, who's making a vow, which likes a first person, looks like an open world fantasy game. Oh, but wait, there's more. We bought Zenimax, Bethesda, who makes Scott who gonna make Skyrim, which is Elder Scrolls, which is an open world fantasy game, first person. Do you see the redundancy in this? Like yeah. I don't understand it goes to this whole like it just seems like Microsoft is throwing money at all these things. And they're, they're like, you know, sort out the bodies later. There's a lot of disconnect. It doesn't seem like there's organization here. It seems like they're just grabbing up studios just to fluff up their feathers to make them look bigger than what they are. Maybe to intimidate Google like they did with Stadium. Maybe to intimidate them, intimidate Amazon, fluffing up their feathers. But meanwhile, they're a little bitch bird. You know, the bird that yeah. fluffs up his feathers and prances around like, eh, look at me, I got 23 studios. We're huge. And meanwhile, guess what? They produce nothing. They got no games lined up with 23 studios. We're, we're hoping when Halo comes out. Yep. It's a joke. They made more. They, we had more games when they had the ragtag group of like three studios. Of like, yep. and they, We got more <laughs> Gears games when they didn't even own Gears. How does that yep. make sense? Well, I mean, again, it's... It's it's a new beginning for <laughs> Why? X- Xbox. It, how is it a new beginning, dude? This is like the sixth console. <laughs> well, I mean, listen. New beginning. If the fan if the fan base is happy and they're ecstatic, they're not happy. all the thirty two studios no, they're not happy. And, and they're happy with, you know, all the development stuff going in with all the old software from previous generations than they are the new stuff, you know. I don't know. I mean, they they seem seem to be content with that, and that's a problem. They're not happy. Oh, look, guys, I lost a sub. <laughs> they must have saw me at six ninety nine. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yeah, must have been. Who knows? But anyway, we'll get that seven hundred. Don't worry, we'll get that seven hundred eventually. But um, you know, the the thing is, is that yeah, it, it's really is um. Uh, it seems to be a disconnect, and now with Drew Murray leaving, people tried to, to try to get that he was leaving because of personal stuff, and maybe he did. But then for him to pop up, man, and show up at Insomniac, like crossing the river before we even seen the light of day of Perfect Dark, and him just like going over there, that's something. That's something else. And then to see Yabara and you know, Ferguson leave. Ferguson was so passionate about Gears and for him to leave. Then looking at what happened to Halo and the shakeup they had to do with there. And we put Joseph Staten in there. Throw him back in there. Why wasn't Joseph Staten working on Halo to begin with? He wrote the first stories. He had well, him on know, Crackdown you know the, 3. Yep. You know the new damage control now as well. The guy wasn't really the head guy, so it really oh, didn't matter. Oh, yeah, yeah. Just, so okay. he, he really wasn't. You know, he was just a janitor. You know? Yeah, he was just a you janitor. Know, yeah. Meanwhile, they, yeah. they count the janitors. Every time the studios are hiring, they, hire. they counted every freaking person that walked in that door. Meanwhile, all I'm saying is that the when even when he announced that he's leaving, I'm like, even if he's leaving for personal reasons, it is real strange that he left after they announced Perfect Dog. Like, Maybe he was just brought on to just put a team together and leave, which I don't like, you know, because Microsoft's all about that contract life, you know, all about those short term things. Maybe they said, hey, three years, we're going to you know, you put a team together and then you could leave. Yep. Maybe that. And, and the thing is, is like you don't operate like that. Like if I was building a team, I'm a manager. Like if I built a team, you know, of, of for a vision and for a thing like that's how you get Halo and Craig. When you just put a whole bunch of random ass people on on a thing without any direction, that's what happens when you build that kind of stuff. And and we said this before: how the hell does Sony come out with all these frigging games, 
and have this lineup all lined up for PlayStation 5 in the COVID when Microsoft is scrambling all over the place. They make goddamn Microsoft Teams. They make the whole meeting structure. Microsoft can't operate remotely. They make the goddamn software. That's why Aaron Greenberg with a 480p uh, webcam was disgraceful. You work at the billion dollar company, billions of dollars. What are you using a freaking potato for? I agree. Like, you make the work at home software. Everybody's working from home. How the hell does Sony get all this stuff out? It's management. And I'm glad David Jaffe's calling that shit out because he's been saying it. He says he, you know, Phil blocked him, but he is been, it's the management over there. It's Phil, yeah. it's Booty, it's all those guys that people love. But the thing is, is that you cannot love somebody that's not giving you the product. It's about the people and not the product. And that's the thing that, you know, I just don't understand how's that acceptable for that. And the thing is, is that if Microsoft doesn't deliver the stuff, they're going to be done. Just like they just like they were scrambling, Jay. You can mirror this whole thing. And I said, this is just a long-term version of Mixer right now we're in. The studio purchasing. I look at the studio acquisition, this Bethesda thing. I call that the ninja move. That's the shroud move. That's the yep. thing. The, the, them throwing money around and then throwing shit at the wall to see what sticks. That's their shroud move. Remember all the waves they made with Ninja going to Mixer and all the PR and shroud just yep. to shut it down six months later? Overnight, 30 goddamn days, Mixer was ghost. After they spent all that money on Ninja. Dude, I went to PAX East last year. They had Ninja. They were lined up like a god like a goddamn lineup, like a baseball lineup. They were all on the side of the Mixer booth. Mixer was shoved down everybody's throats. They got rid of the Xbox booth, and it was all about the Mixer booth. Yep. And that shit shut down in 30 days. July was shutting it done. Goodbye. Go to Facebook Gaming. See ya. The you beam could. technology, remember? You could control mm -hmm. your controller with the streamers. You could play with them. Never brought it to Xbox. Mixer was the only embedded into the operating system of Xbox. Now you can't stream to YouTube. This Game Pass thing is the same venture. UWP is another example. Oh, one app to rule them all. You make the app, it's going to work on the Windows, uh, Windows PC and Xbox. And guess what? Gears 4 was UWP. Nobody used it. No, but no other developers wanted that bullshit. Microsoft shut it down. They made people lose money who backed UWP because they had to change their app. You know what's so crazy about UWP? It took Gears 4 over 500 days to get hacked with UWP. Gears 5 got hacked two days because it used the other method, not UWP, but the one that they used for Steam because they had to change the whole base that they use it on. If you go look at how... Both of them got hacked. They got broke. They got cracked. I mean, cracked. Gears 4 got cracked. It took over 500 days for Gears 4 to get cracked because it used UWP. So Microsoft wanted UWP for better piracy management because it locked away files in the operating system. And yep. then they got rid of that whole thing just to make a buck and put that thing on Steam because nobody in their right of mind was using UWP. They did the same thing with Windows Phone. That's why I've been around to see all this stuff. Like, I am not just, like, some, some like, just never been. I've been through this stuff. This is what adds my frustration to this whole thing because I've seen this before, and I'm just devastated that it has come to Xbox's city steps. I've seen all of Microsoft's failures. I've lost a Zoom. I have Groove Music, $100 Groove Music right here, man. And. Bing. I've seen this stuff. I had Windows phones. I had the Nokia 950. I believed in that vision, dude. And to see that stuff that I saw fail on other areas of Microsoft and now to see the same thing happening to Xbox, it just devastates me because I was diehard. I loved Xbox. And, you know, I, 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 I still – I even have trouble saying I'm going to play on PlayStation. You know what? That's crazy. I've been so used to saying Xbox – my groom's cake was a friggin' Xbox 360 when I got married. My wife had them make an wow. Xbox 360 as my groom's cake with Rice wow. Krispie Treat controllers. Who the hell would have an Xbox at their wedding? I did. You make fun of me all you want, and I'm going to leave you that little tidbit because I hit 700 subs right now. Hit me with the horns, 20. <laughs>
<laughs> Blow out those eardrums. Thank you, Thank you J-Dub. Right. I'm glad you're here for that. Thank you so much, everybody. I didn't even see the number grow. I thought people were unsubbing and all that shit. Thank you very much. Yo, let's see. Did I hit it? Screenshot. Hey man, they can't it. stop greatness. They 701. Can't stop greatness. Hey man, thank you. It's just the way we tell it. You know, it's the it's the truth. It hurts. And the thing is, is as gamers, you don't want to see gaming platforms fail. You don't. Yeah. And you don't want you want like you know even Stadia. Like I wish there was a place for Stadia, but Phil the Mothman Harrison. You know, when I saw that guy show up, I'm like, oh man, death follows him. Ask Atari. As as PlayStation Home, that dude is 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 done, you know. Um, I, I and Google just I thought Google was gonna have it with Stadia, like I thought that they knew how to do this thing. But again, they launched it in beta. See, the thing is, is that these companies think that there's time. See, Google and Amazon and even Microsoft to some extent, they think they got all this time to test and feedback. And you want to know what the problem is? The reason why they have to do that, Jay, is because they have no clue what the customer wants. And what does Sony and Nintendo do? Do you see them putting out betas? Do you see them just trying to figure it out? Oh, no. The Sony go like, hey, guys, would you like an open world samurai game? Uh, you know, we'll send you like, you know, do you think you'll like the multiplayer um, you know, maybe we'll put a beta out there. We'll, like, you know, and see if you like it. Dude, they released a full fledged friggin' multiplayer. Boom. Hit. They didn't figure it out. Like, it wasn't just figuring it out. Like, it's just insane. Like, it's just insane that it's just Microsoft's like, well, of course, all those weapons in Halo should be there day one. There's no figuring this out. And not because it's a service game will figure it out. And that's what I think Microsoft is faulty for. They think service games are them. F- we'll figure it out. Let's just have something for day one. Thank you, everybody. Phil Spencer here. I'm going back to my o- office and eat my berries. That's his meetings. He walks in there and goes, do we have something for day one? You know? And it sucks. But man, hey well, Frogs, I mean, there he is. He's he returned. He got rid of the in-laws. Frogs, it was a great yeah. show. We hit 700 subs, Frogs. We did it. J Dubs, yo, thank you so much. I know you came on here, and man, we're ready to go, man. I just switched over to Grind's table. We didn't even hit the friggin' Grind's table intro logo. We got so into it, dude. I just want to say, we did it. Well, I did, we did it. Thank you so much, Jay, for being here for this. And, you know, we're going to – we'll wrap this up. Unless there's another topic, you have anything you want to talk about at the table. But I think we pretty much whooped that ass. Yeah, I mean, we brought up the topics that – I mean, it's honest conversation, right? What's going on at Microsoft? Uh, I, I keep saying it's feels – it's feel. You have to blame the, the head guy. Still blaming These Don people- Metric, right? <laughs> yeah, you, you can't keep you can't keep blaming Dunny D. <laughs> you know, enough time has passed by, right? Enough of the BS. Um, if this is what you guys want, then keep supporting him. Keep telling him, hey, he's what he's doing is great. Just keep doing it, and and then let that be that. But if you're tired of it, if you want something new, if you want Xbox to be great again, then you have to start asking some questions and the questions may not be what you want it to be. You might not want to blame Phil, but you have to realize, Hey man, it, you know, after you run out of people, you know, all these people keep leaving. What's the least common denominator? I mean, it has to. Yeah. And you don't think Satya sees like Satya sees this? Like he's like Phil, like what's Listen, going on? Listen, yeah. Satya doesn't run the Xbox. He doesn't, but he's like, stuff, where's our right? growth? And Phil's like, uh, <laughs> Listen, I, I think at the end of the day, he just wants to see that Game Pass gain more subs, right? He yeah, doesn't care how they gain right. subs. And I think Phil can easily, you know, um, make more subs. You give him, a, you know, you basically give him away with the Taco Bell deals, the cookie deals, <laughs> the Ritz crackers, um, and so on. And, you know, you make sure you hit that quota. And he's Phil's been hitting that quota um, with there being growth. Now, it's more so about growth. It's about retention. You know, after that 14 day pass is over, that 30 day pass is over, That's after right, that month yeah. subscription is over, uh, 
I want to see what's the sustainability of it. Now, how many you have obtained totally. Um, so, yeah. Exactly. And I think on the, on, on the flip side, Sony, their retention, their uh, PlayStation Plus, they have over 94 plus million plus subscribers. Yeah, they actually listed their PlayStation Plus subscribers. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So and- out of uh, out of 114, 115 million PlayStation 4s, uh, and then we, right now we got about 5 million PS5s. I mean, that's that's freaking 95%. 96 percent um subscriber base and so and yeah. that's you know and they're gonna do it by that, putting great games like in that service and i'm i'm really now i'm looking forward to seeing what the hell they put in for next month like we're gonna hear it this yeah. week like it, both in playstation now and playstation plus and i'm gonna probably do a video on like value like the stuff that you see they're putting in that stuff like i saw somebody do a, a great tweet today and saying like xbox game pass is great for its potential but there's nothing in it right now to sh- to make the claims that it is the best thing in gaming. That is just a premature thing. It has the potential, but they got to show it. And I think that was the best. Because the thing is, if you look at these other two services, which are half the price together, they're 120 a year compared to 180 a year. And look at the games, what they're offering. It's it's crazy because and 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 they're not sacrificing their first party output due to that. That's the craziest thing. That's why I can say at PlayStation, you have VR. You have your subscription service with streaming if you want to PC or yeah. or to you like you know to, to stream. You got the streaming technology. The cloud technology is there. If you if you this is why Sony's doing it, but doing it at such a low key, but people go nobody's talking about it. You wanna know why? Because it's not Sony's primary business. The primary business is about the games, not the services. So we're just playing games on that thing. And the thing that bothers me and grinds my gears a lot is when people come shitting on my lawn going, well, the way you're playing is not the future. It's Phil Spencer's future. Yeah. It's Game Pass and it's cloud and strap-ons and five inch phones and five G and PC and no exclusives. No exclusives. That's anti consumer and cross play. I could play on a goddamn toy. Shut up and keep that shit over there because what I try to point out is with all that bullshit that you're hyping up, Xbox is still irrelevant. Yeah. And still in third. And still not not and making NPDs and not selling games that are in Xbox Game Pass and not dropping amazing big blockbuster games that we were promised. Now Halo is a half-ass friggin' free-to-play game and an and a, and a open-world game with b- bootleg Joel and open-world yep. AAA guns with Craig that were waiting for his pubes to, to, to grow. Yeah, And I swear, with the 12 teraflops... And the most powerful PC ever, Craig better come in with wavy friggin' Bee Gees hair. With the gold chains in the wind. Because he better come with some hair. Because I don't know what the hell they showed, but that was some bootleg Craig. And the thing is, is that's what Halo's become. They broke down Halo in a friggin' trilogy of the Reclaimer trilogy and turned it into an open world fetch quest Craig fest. I don't understand what's going on with Halo, and they got to clear that shit up. But the thing is, it's like it's the direction of these studios, and I think Twenty Three Studios, you know, with, with, was the Spider Man line and Somniac and the theme of everything. With great power comes great responsibility. Responsibility, right? And with Twenty Three Studios, that's a lot of responsibility. And we're seeing how they're messing up with what they got right now. People leaving, games looking horrible. Games, we don't even know what the hell they're going to look like. Avowed. Gameplay of, of Everwild, we don't know. State of K3 is not looking like that, I'll tell you that. No release dates. No release windows. But they're going to have events. Okay. And wait, what happens? Last thing, Jay. What happens? They come out there and Bethesda and Starfield is multiplied. I know well, you're going to have a fun day. Listen, you know I'm going to have a fun day. And the fanboy is already prepared for it. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll 
already kind of overheard some things that they would possibly try to say, mm-hmm. such as, you know, well, they had to because, you know, you you ponies were begging them for it. And, you know, <laughs> yeah. hey, there's damage control for everything. But at the end of the day, it boils down to what is Xbox as a platform and what and how does that make the gamer happy? What are they doing that, that literally the makes thing. the gamer happy right, right now, right? That's the important thing. Like, people are going to damage control, and that's why I really never get, go... Like, people are fans for whatever they want, and I do think that it's going to take people... Everybody's going to have their breaking point. Everybody's going to have the thing that Microsoft does that says, I'm done with it. Yo, what's up, the coon? How you doing, man? Oh, my God. He says, Murray says he's tired of passion projects and needs more walking sims. <laughs> what? Which <laughs> Spider-Man is a walking sim. <laughs> he's tired of passion projects. <laughs> oh, they, they said all that passion. But the thing is, at the end, it, it really is that everybody's going to have their breaking point because Microsoft, it, it's just going to, the, the waiting is going to break people. And that's the thing. Like, it's going to, people are just going to be like, yo, the writing's on the wall, man. I'm, I'm just, this is not, I'm not waiting. Like, you know, this is just enough for me. I'm not going to pay $15 a month. And that's the thing. While you wait, they still want you to pay $15 a month for Game Pass. While you wait for these first-party games. Like, Medium is not in first party, but Medium came out. When's the next one? What's the next one? You sh- they, they showed that whole hit list of bangers, right? Halo was the yeah. only one on there that anybody even give a shit about. The rest of them are ones that got open free-to-play game. What's Crossfire X? What happened with that? First-person shooter to... Smile Gates, brand new game, Crossfire X. Like, why is there such disarray with their game development? Phil was in the crowd talking about Crossfire X. It came out in beta. Not one goddamn person I know played it. It was horrible. But Remedy was making the single player. Remedy updated Control and released that thing. Remedy is talking a lot of shit. People even rumored that Remedy's working with Sony on shit. What happened to Crossfire X? That was supposed to come out last year. That's the other thing. All these games that are slated for this year was supposed to come out last year. Halo, Psychonauts 2, Crossfire X. Those are all last year's games. Yep. So, yep. good luck to Booty. Phil Murray. Phil Murray. I call him Phil Murray. God damn it. Friggin' uh, Eddie Murray. What's his name? Jim Murray. Drew Murray. There he is, Eddie Murray. Yeah. <laughs> Drew Murray. Congrats. Now you're going to show some product. If he's working on Resistance, that would be awesome because they need some first-person shooters over on Sony's platform. That would be good. Some first-party first-person shooters since uh, Gorilla is going to be making Horizon. But, man, hey, it's been a great night. I don't want to keep you long. I kept you too long now, two and a half. But, man, what a show. What a show. Thank you for pulling up. And, and J-Dub, thank you so much for coming on. Tell everybody where they can find you. Uh, this is friggin', This was a great show, man. Thank you so much. Yeah. Definitely. Thanks for the invite, man. It's always good chopping it up with you. You guys yeah. can find me on Twitter at JDubCity16. Trying to keep you guys laughing with all the gifs and the memes. You know what I mean? Uh, you can also find me on YouTube on my channel, jdub for you nice. So uh, go ahead and check me out, man. I'm always streaming different kind of games. A lot of Xbox games, a lot of PlayStation yeah, games. Yeah, we were streaming a couple uh, days ago. You know. streaming? Yeah, here? yeah. You were streaming what game? Were you playing? I'm, I'm I'm doing my own digital foundry analysis. That's right. That's check, what you were doing, out, right? <laughs> I, I want to see if some of these 50 and 60 Metacritic games are worth the score for myself, right? Nice. So I was the medium, uh, Bleeding Edge, uh, Battle Toads. Uh, what, 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 what are some other um, the Falconeer and stuff like that? You know, I, I like I like saying was was J Dub too hard and too harsh <laughs> on uh, on Phil and Microsoft with some of the bangers that they had, you know. I wouldn't call them bangers, but I, I they're 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 games, I guess. But like you know, you know, you know, you you know my motto: one man's fodder is another man's banger. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a quote for the day. God damn it! Holy <laughs> shit! But yeah, thank you so cool. much. Hey, thank you so much, grinders. This has been 700 subs. Thank you so much. It's an awesome night, frogs. I see you in the chat, man. We'll catch up later on, and uh, we'll be back next week. With a brand new show, but stay tuned to this channel. New subs and old subs grinders. We're gonna I'm gonna be doing the breakdown of the Share Factory, how to edit that. I'm gonna do a tutorial on that. 
and I'm going to be doing some more uh, content creation here, probably some gear reviews on some technology that I've been looking at in addition to what grinds my gears, and we'll be doing that thing. So stay tuned for that. Hit that like button on your way out. Thank you so much, everybody. The support has been amazing. I, I, it's just awesome. I got to go get a drink now because my freaking throat is like killing me. It was a great show. But, Jay, thank you for coming out. And, uh, guys, hit that like button and stay tuned. We are shutting down the gaming grindhouse for this week, episode 7. Murray out of the dock going home to Insomniac.